Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Resonance Arcade, episode 19. As you can see, we've got Sam and Lou with us today. Steve is unfortunately otherwise engaged. Internetless. Internetless. He's, uh, yeah. Something's exploded in, around his area. Um, <laughs> Or something, um, but yes, Sam and Lou are here, and we uh, we're talking about just general games and things that we've played over New Year. So Happy New Year to everybody! Happy New Year, hey, everyone! Happy yeah. New Year, or, or or miserable New Year if you prefer 2015. that. Yeah, I didn't think I'd see that far. I'll be honest with you. Did you yeah. think you'd see that far when you were watching Back to the Future? Oh, don't don't start with the Back to the Future. Not not already. I knew, I knew, I knew that upset you. Sorry. Every every second tweet that I see is about Back to the Future. I haven't seen any of the um, uh, DeLorean time panel things yet, though. I was expecting to see at least five hundred of them per minute. You will, Wait until October. Yeah. <laughs> oh, is it is it actually in October that the that yeah, you're right? Yeah. Yeah. October to invent everything to, to put in the movie. I I I'm a bit of a. Um, geek about the films but I don't know the detail you know I, I love I love everything about those films I think Sam and I have a very similar opinion on them that they're awesome that they're not just awesome every single scene sound effect every single prop everything in the Back to Future films is perfect everything has been placed in exactly the right place at exactly the right time every it's just they're just you couldn't ask for a better a, a better trilogy in my in my eyes yes Star Wars fans you heard me it's definitely up there, man. It's more consistent than the Star Wars trilogy, I'd say. I mean, I do love Star Wars. Don't get me wrong. I mean, in fact, this isn't this isn't why. But I'm actually wearing a, a t-shirt. If you can read it, probably not. You're wearing a t-shirt. Are well, you? it's a it's a t-shirt for. Um, it's so excited about trilogies that you're wearing a t-shirt. Yeah, that's it. It's a trilogy <laughs> shirt. I've got three on, one after the other. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a, a Back to the Future t-shirt, anyway. So, all right, a one I bought that's got a Back to the Future reference on it, anyway. Anyway, so yeah, we were just going to talk about what we got for Christmas because we're all still kids and our spouses and friends still buy us computer games for Christmas. Some of us, or we bought our, ourselves some, and uh, <laughs> what we've played over Christmas as well. I've actually played a few games that I've had in my Steam library for quite some time. Uh, yay. That I wanted to, yay! Yeah, <laughs> I was a, I was a bit ill over Christmas, so I didn't actually sit down. And in fact, the days that I was ill, I didn't play anything. I, d I couldn't even bring get most of the energy to watch anything let alone i was just laid in bed going Arr! so yeah you're so ill that the light coming towards your eyes just like you could only capture it from about this far away so you uh, had to yeah I, I didn't actually have any problem with seeing or light i was just um i just i just knackered i literally could not move or speak or do anything could see Bless. just about. Are you okay yeah. now, though, Chris? I'm much better. I'm much better. I'm still yeah. coughing little green things up. I don't know where yeah. they're coming from, but I do that for months after I've been you ill. Should, you shouldn't. And also, your these. beard has grown quite a lot since the last time we saw you. I was trying to. Like, yeah, I've no got a black t-shirt on, so you can't see it. But it's if pretty I do long, that, like it's pretty that long. Is, that needs to trim, mate. You no, turned into Gandalf. I actually been to get it cut twice over. Since last time, I think you didn't do a good, very good job. They do because otherwise it's like this. It's out here. I look like I look like blessed if I don't have it there. <laughs> yes. Anyway. So I mean, you're yeah. going for the Gandalf. Is that I, the, is that the general idea? I'm going for the wizard. You know, you know, when I started growing a beard, I actually had that. Um, there was something I saw somewhere on Twitter or Facebook, and it was different grades of beard, and the last one was wizard, and that's what I'm going for. I'm going for the wizard down here. Uh, I actually said to the missus a few days ago, um, I'm, I'm, I think next time I go, it's getting a bit ridiculous, and I just keep finding hairs about this long everywhere. Um, and she, she got her face kind of said it all. It's like, no, you do that, and that's the end. It's the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not going to trim it. Off. I was thinking of trimming it down, but I think I might I'll just keep going. I don't know. It's one of those. Uh, day by day, I change my mind. Well, there you go. But anyway, so, uh, Lou's facial hair is now actually quite acceptable, I think. Yeah, because I'm doing this bit as well. November, yeah. December. It's been it's been a while since you shaved it off as well as we have, must have had a few shows with uh, without your horrible porno stash. Yeah, we did. We had all of December. Well, we yeah, didn't do we, any of these for a while, did we? No. No, we did. We had a few weeks off before that. But yeah, because I was ill and that. Anyway, yeah, it's been are. a while. It has. It has. Yeah. Um, so yeah, over Christmas we've watched a few films, played a few games, and uh, I've done. I've actually got myself quite, quite a lot back into game dev. I've been, I've been really hammering it. In fact, and uh, working on some boring stuff that 
you know, I wasn't that yeah, you know, I've been putting menus together for the games, you know, for for rebinding controls and setting audio options, you know, all the boring stuff. So I've been getting myself back into that and getting my team motivated as well over the last uh, week or so. Um but yeah, boring I, but important stuff though, isn't it? Boring but critical, in fact. You know, it's it's one of those things that even playtesting as I'm playing around with it not being able to rebind your controls, not being able to change the resolution and all—it just it makes it a nightmare. So, <laughs> yeah, it is critical. Um, I've been uh, over Christmas. I didn't get many games. I, uh, I I got Last of Us Remastered, which I'm very chuffed about. I haven't played it yet. I'm going to sit down on the PS4 at some point and like get into it. I think I'll uh, play it with the wife. And uh, quite looking forward to that after Sam's recommendations and everybody else on the planet. Yeah. And uh, I've obviously seen some screenshots and some videos and that. And uh, no, it's it's. I'm looking forward to that one, even though I'm not a particularly big Naughty Dog fan, because uh, I know you're you're into Naughty Dog's games, aren't you, Sam? Yeah, but I've not played like Jack and Daxter or anything like that. And I remember playing Crash Bandicoot. I thought you had. Uh, I've not really played Jack and Daxter. I've played Crash Bandicoot a bit when it first came out. I've never really played Jack and Daxter games. I've thought about doing it. Oh, Ratchet, Ratchet and Clank Ratchet was the ones Clank. I was into. Yeah, which was, not... they kind of competed. So once I bought first Ratchet and Clank, it wasn't, well, at the time I couldn't afford to go out and buy every game franchise that I wanted. So I kind of got that one stuck with it. Yeah. So I do like them. I'm sort of from Uncharted onwards, I've been into their stuff, which is basically all they've done is Uncharted and The Last of Us, basically. Since yeah, I, I played the Last um, Generation. I played Crash Bandicoot back in the day. Not my thing, you know, on Rails Runner, but it was an early, you know, it was an early kind of implementation of them, wasn't it? You know, mm. um, I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't that keen. I, in fact, I think that was one of the first games I played on a PlayStation, and that kind of put me off PlayStations, and probably why I kept on with the Nintendos over PlayStations yeah. until I grew up a little bit and uh, realised that PlayStation was actually pretty awesome and. You know, had the money to buy that as well as the one that my parents bought me, the the Nintendos. I don't think I've ever gotten away with one of the more modern uh, platform style games, like Crash Bandicoot and stuff like that. I just don't like them. I, I really, in that style, I really liked it. That um, uh, Super Mario sixty four and Super Mario Galaxy. They're Wasn't both a fan of those. brilliant games. Have you played them though? I played uh, Mario sixty four. I don't think there's anyone who hasn't played Mario sixty four. Yeah, well, it was it, I, it was the first I like. First console 3D game that I played, yeah. and I, pl- I remember my my I played it on my my um, cousin's N64. Uh, he brought it round, and I played it all weekend while he was there. Like I didn't pay any attention to him whatsoever because it was a single player game anyway. And uh, and then at the end of the weekend, he gave me the N64, and I was like, "What?" As a Best kid, I was like, ever. I was trying Nintendo to get as, 64! I was trying to get as much in as I could over the weekend, and I didn't need to. Could Why have spent time with me cousin. I, I don't know. I, 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 to be fair, they'll probably be able to tell you my mum and my cousin, they probably arranged something. Or, I don't pity, know. Sam. It was pity. Yeah, pity. Yeah, it's probably because he didn't have time to play it, and he, he had a kid, and oh, he was, he was, you know, a kid was on the way and stuff. I don't know. But, oh, was he like... I, I just thought he was... Of a similar age to you, I wasn't thinking he was like. Oh no, no, he's he's ten, older cousin. He's at least ten years older than me, I think. Ah, that makes a bit more sense. I think yeah, is. if it was like if you were both twelve, you wouldn't be like, "Well, do you want me to sixty four? You'd be like, "Uh, nope, it's mine." We <laughs> 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 had a conversation with yourself then. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I do that a lot. Yeah, as uh, just to quote Black Adder, it's one of the other ways of guarantee decent conversation. Yes. Uh, you don't get any stupid answers. Oh, off, if actually, occasionally, I do get give myself stupid answers. It's a bit odd. Yeah. Yeah, uh, we, we've got a couple of people joining the channel. Hello, Biggs. How you doing, matey? And uh, all corpos, whatever. All corpos. So I can. I don't even know what we that is. Him, I think we just call him corpse. Corpse. Well, should yeah. Should be core, shouldn't it? Spelled like that. Uh, he's. I don't know. American, probably. Whatever. You tell us. You tell us. We've asked him before. I think we asked him last. Uh, Last year. Anyway, should we get him on the show just to tell to pronounce his name for us? Yeah, we should add someone on the show today. Actually, with Steve not being here, but it was a bit short notice. It was like ten minutes I had to arrange a guest, so probably probably best we didn't. Yeah. And happy New Year to you, you guys. And uh, and we've already said all that, but hey, you know it's live. Everyone doesn't. Everyone's aware of that. <laughs> Good day from what Potato Power as well. Hello, matey. It is oh. pronounced corpse. So is that corpse. core? 
Or is that corpse? Oh, corpse, right. It's corpse, pronounced yeah. corpse. Yeah. We have been pronouncing corpse, but the, the spelling is call. Yes. Um, so, yeah, we were just, uh, again, seeing as though people have just joined the um, thing. No, Steve hasn't died. Stee His internet has. has. Yeah, Steve's internet has died. So we've, uh, we're have we in a state where we've, we're just babbling today. We're just talking about games we've got over Christmas, games we've played and uh, and that kind of thing. And yeah, I was, we, usually, we, if one of us isn't here, it's probably because we're dead. Yeah, usually. And then <laughs> we just usually. we use our magic, um, our mana power that we gain over raise the week dead. To, to raise dead yeah to <laughs> cast resume. a phoenix down or something <laughs> can I get a res <laughs> <laughs> yeah speaking of speaking of World of Warcraft that's just reminded me of reses in World of Warcraft although I suppose it's from every MOR, MMORPG isn't it I um I was what I was someone today I was having a bit of banter on Twitter with someone and I posted a picture I found just randomly found a picture of a, um, a dark elf with a legs akimbo uh, it wasn't porn yeah, or course. anything. It wasn't porn, but she had a legs akimbo. Hardly anything covering the um, the lower the, the nether regions. Lying on a tiger, with World of Warcraft written underneath. I was like, sex really does sell, doesn't it? That's uh... oh, this was official. Oh, it, was an, it looked official. It very. It's on my Twitter anyway. If you nip on it and have a quick look, it's. it's... Are you sure, it's not doctored in some way. No, it's not. It's not naked or anything. It's it's it's. I would say it's on the on the border of tasteful, you know, it's not it's not <laughs> border of tasteful. Well put it this way, slight, shortly after that, just for a laugh, I put in Dark Elf World of Warcraft porn into Google. Just try that. And then you'll no, see you'll no, see what, what tasteful before. is. <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't I'm really fully aware of how Rule thirty four works, Chris. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, uh, I got um I said I got Last of Us remastered over Christmas. Very much looking forward to it. Haven't played it yet, but will do. Um I also got Battle Block Theatre, and um, which is a, an indie game that's been out for a while, but I got it on the Steam Winter Sale. Um, I don't know what that's about, but I've had it recommended to me a number of times. So again, I'm gonna I'm gonna have a good go with that. And uh, another game called QB Minus One, which is an indie game that was developed by somebody that was on the MMO Buff um, show a good while back. So I wanted to I wanted to have a go with that, and it looks quite interesting. Um, something to do with moving cubes around and solving puzzles and, and stuff, so I'm uh, going to get on them three. But apart from that, I didn't really get anything. Didn't do much else. What about you guys in terms of getting games over Christmas? Did you did you get anything? Um, I bought myself Elite Dangerous, um, right. and I also bought myself all of the um, the required things that you need for Elite Dangerous, like Track IR. So what, what appeals to you about this game? Because everyone on Twitter is going on about it because it's now been released. Yeah, you've got your £400 joysticks. Yeah, well, it wasn't £400, it was £100. But I've, I've spent a lot of money on, on Elite Dangerous, actually. Well, I, Not specifically, but... We've but, all done it on peripherals okay. for specific games in the past. Yeah. I mean, no, I don't think any of us have ever bought Steel Battalion, but look at the ridiculousness of that. Do you, do you remember that? You got no, a, I don't you, remember that. You got an army crate full of gear, and it was basically like a... A big console with dual joysticks and pe and foot pedals and stuff. It was crazy. <laughs> it's like two hundred quid or something, or more than that. Um, but I, I, it was one of those games that was absolutely terrible as well. It wasn't very good, whilst whilst costing an absolute fortune because of all the peripherals. Right. But I've done the same that with like um, Guitar Hero and that. You know, I bought all the extras for that and got extra guitars for my friends. So. Um. The 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 the, um, the appeal of Elite Dangerous is I played the original Elite on. Um, I can't remember which machine it was on. Um, it wasn't on the BBC. It might have been the Spectrum, yeah. It might have been a port, but I just really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed the um, the exploration part of it. In the new Elite uh, Dangerous, uh, it's a very good-looking game. You can fly around the, the whole galaxy, basically, um, exploring, going to visit new planets and stuff like that, and it's just... You can you can go on a pilgrimage to Earth as well, can't you? You, or something? you can, sort of can. You need a permit to get there. Right. So typical. If, yeah, if you if you typical earthlings, if typical you're in earth the beta, bureaucracy. Yeah. <laughs> if you're in the beta, you get the permit automatically. So for Greg's got it, but I don't. So I've got to earn it somewhere. I think I've got to basically build reputation with the Earth Federation or whatever it is. So I can't go there. I'll get shot down if I try and visit Sol. Nice. <laughs> also typical of earthlings. <laughs> Don't like so, your type round here. So what? Come on, tell me, t sell the game to me because it's one of those games that I probably would try, especially if I had an Oculus. I think I'd give it a go. But it's not that good in the Oculus. That's why I got the Track IR. So the Oculus, 
It's a great device. I love it. When I get an Oculus, when it's released, I want to qualify. When it's released, it'll be perfect. At the moment, the resolution just isn't really there mm. to, to see all of the, the, the little readouts and stuff. Um, yeah, I thought that when I tried it. You're looking at the map, and the difference between a player and an NPC is that the player has a hollow square and the NPC has a filled square. All you can see in the Oculus is orange blobs. It's really hard. So I bought myself a track IR as well, which is much better because I can use it on my TV, on my TV, on my screen. Biggs, Biggs has just said it. it's a nice landing and takeoff sim. That's... Oh, it's great. Yeah, that's brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> but that, that, that's it? Uh, well, no, it's not. that's not the only thing, but it's the fact that you have to do these things manually. That's it's, fine. It, it's I... a simulator, not really a game. You know what you I mean? Fast, you can't just fast. You can't like go. Oh, I've discovered this location. Fast travel. You have to actually go there. You no, right? you do. You can fast travel. Hmm. Yeah, but is you have to do certain things. I when I played that was it the beta that I played. Yeah. You can fast travel to somewhere, but if you want to dock, you've got to dock properly. You can't just yeah. fast travel and you're outside the place you want to go and you walk through the door. Hmm. I think it's it. It offers quite a lot in a single package it's 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 a very in-depth game you can do trading you can be a pirate if you want you can interdict people on the way around like the, the solar system or whatever or various solar systems you can go exploring you can do quite a, diff a lot of different things in order to to achieve progress in the game you, you don't ever leave the ship or anything do you you're in the ship all the Not time at the moment but um that's something that's planned eva is planned so right. you'll be able to get outside your ship and fix it is that also, it, though? You, you won't be able to go and explore on a planet? Planet side's also planned. I was just going to say, is there a, in the beta, there wasn't any planets, was there, that you could land on? You can't land on the planets. If you fly too close to a planet, you'll so just get sucked into the gravity. But it is planned to have procedural planets. So you, can't sh sky. you can't shoot monsters and have sex with green women, then? Um, like, you can pretend like... you're having sex with green women. <laughs> Fair enough. Pretend the people you shoot at are monsters. But it, I can, yeah, I could do that without buying elite. <laughs> it's a very, it's a very, it's a very solid game. Uh, I I really enjoy it, but it's, it's the fact. I think it's the whole, the whole like using the joysticks and and using a track IR. It's a different way to play a game. So there's a lot of novelty just in the way you're playing it as well. Yeah, and it's it's it to me it's just the danger of that becoming repetitive and a little bit like right. I need something more out of the game than just play. It's like when I play Battlefield. I play, I play Battlefield. Um, I, I play with the helicopters and the uh, and the planes with my with my joystick, and I play the first person with my keyboard. And I like that. I like jumping between them. And if they, if you can do that, if if they implement a planet side exploration and making it a bit more in depth than just going around space and landing places and trading, and that sounds to me like that's the limit of it. Oh, and you can have pirate battles as well can't you with pirates uh you can be a pirate if you want isn't it I, I, is it classed as more or less like a flight sim space rpg type experience that's what it, yeah that's RPG, what the old one seemed to be like rpg probably less so yeah. you but can you, you, there's upgrade your, yeah, you upgrade your equipment and your ship and stuff by earning yeah. money and that don't you yeah, you, you buy a new ship and then you can put stuff on it, but it's not really RPG progression. It's you, it's basically buying stuff in game. I guess yeah. there are RPG elements to it, but it doesn't feel like an RPG. That just reminded me of um, something similar to what we're talking about, uh, No Man's Sky. I mm. read something recently saying that you won't be able to upgrade your ship. You can get different ships, but you can't customise it or upgrade it or do anything with it. Yeah, there's basically everything in the game is procedurally generated, including the ship. So you basically get given a randomly generated ship to begin with, I think, and then you can take other ships, something like yeah, that. Yeah, you can find them or something, but I don't know. But there's no, there's not really going to be any crafting or anything like that in it. You just land on planets and explore, I believe. But they haven't really released that much of things that you can do. They've just explained what you can't do. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm kind of still skeptical of Snowman Sky. I've watched quite a lot about it, and um, I keep seeing the, those interviews with that guy who, uh, who runs the studio. The, you know, the one who's laughing a lot for no reason. Um, he seems to be very amused by the game, but uh, yeah, it just it looks beautiful. Don't get me wrong, but it just doesn't look like there's going to be that much to do in it. And with Elite Dangerous, there is quite a bit to do with it. Like if you play Star Citizen at the moment. You basically all you can do is walk around uh, a hangar, or fly around basically 
a Far Cry map without any floor, shooting hmm. people. Well, I've There's been playing, not that much to do in it. I've been playing uh, Starbound recently. Um, I think Terraria I might have mentioned it. Yeah, I might have mentioned it a while ago. And I, I initially thought that it was a little bit shallow. And then I've started finding, you know, ways to leave the planet and go and, like, explore the universe. And got to another planet, uh, another, yeah, another planet. F- got the same situation where I was a little bit like, right, I'm doing the same thing again. Just digging down and getting ore and... This is just to go and see another planet that will do the same thing and then I'll be digging around. And, and now they've released an update. They do nightly builds on it as well, but I, I haven't subscribed to that beta. But they do a unstable beta, which is like more... It's further on than the official release, if you know what I mean. Mm. Um, and I've been playing that recently and they've done a fair amount in it. There's a, quite a few more quests in it, uh, procedurally generated quests, I believe. Um, quite a lot more things on the planet, like you can run around... Uh, and you'll you'll come across civilizations and more interesting stuff. And I think they've always been there. It's just they've changed the frequency of them. Excuse me. And they've added more prefabs in there. So they've added more sections that can build more interesting, like underground caverns or um, different. There's loads of different races in it. It's actually quite an interesting game. Mm. Um, I've spent a lot of time in it so far. So you know, I can't I can't really say I got it for free as well. Um, someone gifted it. To, it was Potato that gifted it to me. In fact, so I can't really complain about it at all. But they've removed some things as well. Like in Terraria, you use a pickaxe, don't you, to mm-hmm. uh, to dig down. Um, in this game, you could use pickaxes in the last build that I was using, but they've removed them or they've they've um, what's it called? Nerfed them. They've nerfed the pickaxes so. They run out really, really quick, and I can't seem to use ore on them to repair them anymore, like I used to be able to. And plus, I'd be using shit tons of ore, but they're much better than they were as well. So it's weird. They've kind of nerfed them, but change the them, balance. Yeah, change the durability, so it's really, really they're really quick to die. But um, you've got a matter manipulator, and they seem to have added extra stuff into that, so you can now upgrade your matter manipulator instead of it just having like a four by four square that you can dig with. You can upgrade it so it's quicker. You can upgrade it so it collects uh, water and oil and uh, lava and all kinds of other stuff. And you can get it so it, um, it it has a bigger area as well. I haven't done that yet, but and then they've also got tech upgrades like extra jump uh, speed, uh, extra speed, and then there's there's a few new um, like powers in there, like uh, temporary powers, like you get automatic regeneration and things like that. And it, it's it's interesting, but. It's procedurally generated again, but it just doesn't seem to be very... I don't know, there's something about the worlds that aren't that interesting to me yet. Not if... compared to, um, to Terraria's worlds, which are... I'm trying I'd not say to... say the most, most interesting procedurally generated worlds I've seen. I'm trying not to compare it to Terraria, because Terraria is a well-established game. Uh, and this is different. It's it's not the same as Terraria. It's It's got the same ideas. You still plant plants. Um, you can still... Um, you, you know, dig into the core of the planet. You can, but all of the all of the planet is circular as well. All the planets are circular, so you you run around. And if it's a really big planet, it takes you ages to run around mm. the planet. And if it's not, and it's and it's set as well, so the planet procedurally generates, but then it's set. And then whatever you do on that planet, so you can establish a base on one planet. You can then go and explore hundred new planets, but you can beam straight back to your base whenever you wanted to. So it's quite handy that it's it's cool. Did you say circular? Do you mean spherical or do you mean circular? I mean, um, like it loops infinitely. Yeah, it's an infinite loop. So, so if you say, for example, you set, you build a little house, and then you run right, depending on how big the planet is, eight thousand blocks, six thousand blocks, ten thousand blocks. When you get to ten thousand blocks, it will you'll get back to your house. Gotcha. So. And, and it, it, the good thing is, is small planets are pretty quick to go around. There's also different types of planets as well. You can get, you can go on moons, and they've got no atmosphere, and you can get an atmosphere suit, which I haven't got yet. Um, and there's uh, there's like planets that at night it gets really cold, and you have to stay near fire sources in order to stay alive. And it's interesting. I'm not sure I like the control system, or that it feels quite flimsy as it stands. Um, but I'm I'm quite liking the game. I'm quite enjoying it. I keep going Biggs, back to it. So, Biggs mentioned there are mini uh, mini bosses possibly. Oh uh, yes, I've, I've fought a couple of mini right. bosses the first time round. Um, again, the structure was different on the first game that I played because the 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 new release that they've done on the unstable beta, it's got um, 
you start off on your ship and your ship's knackered and you have to basically go down to the planet end up you end up having to do loads of little different missions but you end up having to go down to the core of the planet and pick up core fragments and then use them to repair your ship and then you once you've done that you can go to a gate and the gate can take you to an outpost and the outpost is where you can buy things and trade and get quests and things like that and i think there's probably quests on the planets but i haven't played that many planets um and yet they've changed the fuel types for the for the ships as well. You used to be able to run the ships on coal, but now you have to run it on this iridium coal, or something. What's coal? Yeah. <laughs> like <a> <laughs> <laughs> no, that's the thing. Coal is useless. Coal gives you one fuel unit. But if you get plutonium, uranium, or something else, they all give you like four or eight per section, but they're much rarer, and they only appear on some planets. So it... chemists and nuclear physicists just with their hands. <laughs> yeah. <There's> only... <laughs> Sticking I just want to point out as well that you're sticking of coal in a nuclear power plant, it'll still work. It'll be yeah. crap. But yeah, it's it, it's it's interesting, and I, I I suppose I would recommend it. It's still in um, pre-alpha, pre-release. That word that I always forget. And um, early access. Early right? access. Uh, Le- 20, 2015 is the year where you learn to say that bloody phrase. I have got some new post-its. I got them for Christmas. <laughs> early access is an easy thing to remember. What, I, what? Early. I think it's. Uh, I think I know why Chris struggles with it. It's because we've always called those things something else, normally pre-alpha or stuff like that. All right. I will never forget again unless my wife comes in here and removes that post-it note from the front of my. Uh... Sal, leave that one alone. He needs to be able to say that word. And that's probably backwards, but that is now my. Early access on your big knob. On my big knob. Oh. There we go. Ooh. There we go. I'm back. Uh, I'm back. Now? Apologies for any feelings of nausea that may have created. <laughs> it was yes. simulator sickness from Chris. But <laughs> yeah. By by proxy of just watching this show, then you accept responsibility for your own uh, nausea. <laughs> it's like the cookie things that they've had to put on webs all websites these days. We we do cook. We use cookies like every other website on the web on the on the, on the web tonight. It's only British sites. Well, English UK sites. Pointless, isn't it? Is this, Warning, some... this this website contains text. Yeah. <laughs> Warning, you are using the interweb. So what about you, Sam? Then, uh, what have you been playing? Uh, no, what I've have been, you? Did well, you get I, anything for Christmas? I got I got myself a Christmas present. I got myself a PS4. Well, before just before Christmas. Yep, I think you mentioned whatever, that. Whatever it was, the twenty twentieth of December or whatever it was, I got it that weekend before Christmas. I think I got it. Um, no, it was it was before that because I managed to bash through The Last of Us again. Because I got remastered with it and was like, oh, I'll have a crack at this. But since I've played the game before, I can bash through it quicker than you you will on your first run. Yeah. And that was really cool. And I played the DLC as well. There's a story DLC that is sort of set at a certain point in the game where you can drop out. Well, I chose to drop out the main game, play the DLC, and then finish the main game. Right, right. I'm not going to tell you anything about it because that's spoiling. Thank you. Um, I do will still want to play that game. It's story related DLC. So you, know, you know you never will, don't you, Lou? I will. I'm going to borrow Steve's PS3 and play. I was going to say, I was going to say you could you could borrow Steve's PS3 and my copy of The Last of Us because I've got it on the PS3 and I've got it on the PS4 as well, so I don't need my PS3 copy. But how awesome are my mates? Hey, <laughs> you're not borrowing anything off me, you fucking scrounging bastard. <laughs> I don't want anything off you, it's full of beer there. Yeah, remind us later and I'll, uh, I'll get it sent to you tomorrow if you want. Or I can even. No, I'm not going to drive down and drop it off, I'll send it to you. Did I you get... see you. Didn't you get a second uh, game with your PS4 as well? I got three, I got the GTA 5 as well. It's just, it was a bundle, so I was like, well. I just I read. Games I... That, I looked, that I would mind playing again. So I played a little bit of GTA 5 first person and I got Far Cry 4 with it as well, which is what I've been playing mostly. I tried to. Go on. GTA 5. What's the GTA 5 first person like? Because I'm really interested in this. I'm going to get it's, it for the PC. It's it's okay. I think you, people. It'll like be you better on PC. Of, it'll be better on PC. Yeah, I can guarantee right. you that much. I think you people like you that have played a lot of first person games. It it doesn't have the same slick feel as I say Far Cry 4 does. You know with the they've, way it, it it feels when you move around. They've added loads of new animations just for the first person stuff so I imagine you'll get yeah. Trevor doing that and that kind of thing you know in front of you when he's when he's running around shouting at people on the street um, I imagine f- fully clothed uh, encounters with prostitutes as well oh yeah apparently oh. nice yeah I <laughs> I didn't even think of that I play. I only played the first introduction bit where you're at the uh, um, 
after you know that first introduction where you're in that that the snowy place at the beginning yeah and then you and then you get to franklin in the city and then i played that first mission where you take the cars to civilians and that was it i just i wanted to have a dabble I yeah, um back to it since, but I plan to. Read a review yesterday uh, in a in OPM official PlayStation magazine. I don't work for OPM, by the way. It's just the magazine <laughs> that I happen to subscribe to. And um, the guy who who reviewed it gave it nine out of ten, and he was like, "This is potentially one of the best, you know, the best conversions I've ever seen in my life, and it's very much worth it." But again, I don't know if they're paid to say that in OPM. For Probably are PlayStation well, games or any any mainstream magazine really will give it. Every Call of Duty game will get ten out of ten, won't it? No, no, you'd be surprised that the the pretty. I think nine pretty, out of ten. Then sorry, the, no, no, they're pretty good um, in OPM. Uh, in, I, I, in my opinion, anyway. They, they, I've seen them. They gave. Um, I'm sure they. When I used, I used to read that magazine quite a lot, and I'm sure they gave the first Assassin's Creed a seven, and I think they gave one of the like either Revelations or Brotherhood a seven as well. So they're not like just throwing out. Nines and tens for the big, for the big and boys. They're, they're quite critical as well in in those magazines. I, I I like it. I like their style of writing generally. Potatoes just mentioned the torture scene in first person as well. So you yeah. you say you say that it's it's not as slick. Now that that sets alarm bells off in my head because if if a game doesn't control right as a first person shooter, it's not a first person shooter. It, and I can't play it, it. it. You have to bear it in mind as well that there is a disconnect of having played the game as a normal GTA third person that introductory level when I was in it, doing it in first person it felt weird because I played it before in third so and there could be a little bit of that on, it's my own problem like if you if you I mean you've played the game before have you I have yeah I've completed it so you know but yeah you've played Grand Theft Auto in general so you know how it feels so I don't know if that's a part of it as well like I plan to go back to it and give it another go and see if it feels a bit different it was I, quite interesting. It was funny going out and getting into fights with random people in the street. That was funny. I will not. <laughs> I will not buy the updated version on PS4. I guarantee that because I, I'm going. I'm going to wait for it to come out on PC, and I might it get it. It's months, does not it? And in fact, if I yeah. if I do get it, I'll only get it so I can play it with Lou and Steve and everyone else. I don't want to just get it to play it again because the the only thing is it looks better. It's got slightly better handling. I believe the cars are. are a lot nicer to, to handle in general, but then again, they weren't too bad in GTA Five anyway. I, th- I quite yeah. liked. I thought that they were better than Four. Four, I didn't like the handling of the cars. They did something yeah. to the system that just didn't. It work. It was very floaty, wasn't it? I remember when I played Four uh, initially. I, it took me a while to get used to the cars because it was like driving boats. Yeah, they were really heavy. Like in, in the old games, you could slam into a corner at really high speeds and still make it. You couldn't in GTA Four. You would just go smashing oh. into the nearest wall. God, I'm playing. Um, I think I think you bought this and played about two seconds of it, Lou. Um, St- State of Decay. Yeah. Yeah. Now I I really like State of Decay. It's a PC game. I think it was an indie title. Oh no, it's Microsoft published, so it may not be an indie title, but. That doesn't mean anything, does it? Actually, um, anyway, the ca- car handling in that is utterly atrocious. You you put the handbrake on, pull left, and you just go like that. It's it's, <laughs> it's every single time I try and go round something. Like I give it, you know, I give it a bit of bit of room, and I try and pull round with a bit of handbrake. But no, I just do that and end up one eighty on myself. That's the only thing about that game I don't like, though. But everything else, I really enjoy it, and it's it's a total sandbox in terms of you just go out. I think there's a main like kind of story quest type thing, but it's not really that important. You're just trying to survive, and it's re. I really like it. You keep moving bases to different places and stuff. But I imagine Lou didn't get it. I, I didn't. I didn't feel it. I, I, as soon as I realised I had to kind of manage your party. And I was going to change my character. That I like. That. Only Grand Theft Auto Five has been a game where I've actually managed to tolerate that. Every other game, I hate that. I, I know where you're coming from, and I don't generally like having to switch characters. Um, GTA Five did it brilliantly for some reason. That mm. some, apparently in the newer the newer version as well, it's more immediate than it was in the old one. I haven't even got to the point where you can play as multiple characters yet, so I genuinely don't know. It did that thing where it zoomed out over the city mm. and then... Which was cool, but... Load. I thought it was really cool, yeah. It was cool, like but that. after five hours of playing it, you're like... Right. I didn't mind it. I, I, it was cool, especially when you go to Trevor and you find him, he's like on top of a building in his pants with a beer <laughs> bottle or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, no, I, like, I like that, yeah. It was always fun switching to Trevor. <laughs> <laughs> um... He was actually my favourite character. I think I used him more than anybody else. He was my favourite character as well. I think, yeah, I think most wonderful. people did. I think if they have, if you could see the game stats for GTA Five, everybody would have played as Trevor constantly. 
It's because he was abusive and everyone oh, wants Trevor to be in that. Address. That's it's what cathartic. I was. That's what it is. Although Michael had basically the dead eye power from from Red Dead Redemption, so in actual fights where you could play as all three of them, I picked him because he had the best power. The best didn't, power. Um, Tre- Trevor had a rage or something, didn't he? he was a... crap though. It's useless. So like, what good was it? I don't know. You, you, you could get shot a lot, I think. Uh, Which I felt I felt is a little bit disconnected from reality. I know it's GTA, but you know, GTA usually has some kind of grounding in in reality. Even what was Franklin's uh, power? He was driving, was the, wasn't it? He could do the yeah, slow driving. Really useful, especially when you're doing the races. I did yeah. all the races with Franklin because he had the driving <laughs> skill. Everything just. Oh, no, no, no. I know uh, what you're thinking. There's going to be something in in probably <laughs> incredibly racist that I'd have made up on the oh. spot. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I don't, I, 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 yeah, do you know? You know, not not live in your, in, your, in the living room with my friends, maybe. But. Anybody in the audience who thinks they know what that is, that's you being racist. Cause yeah. whatever it is, because I haven't actually thought of anything. I was just thinking <laughs> of something to say, and I was just all these things were coming into my head, and I was like, no, nope, can't say that, can't say that, can't say that, can't say that. Sorry. <laughs> um, but I'm I, really I, looking forward to that. 27th of January comes out on the PC. 27th of January, and I'll if we get it, it we, we, need to, we need to do some streams of that, actually, I think, because I think that'll yeah. be a lot of fun playing with friends. Yeah, I want to play through the single player again first, though. But, yeah. Whatever. Well, I, I'm, I'm happy to play it multiplayer immediately. Um, so, Well, I, maybe have a bit of the single player just to get used to it, but... Because yeah, I've played it through, and I'm, you know, hap- I'm happy. I know the game enough not for it to be spoilt by playing the multiplayer. So I didn't play any of the multiplayer on PS3 Me because neither. only because it wouldn't work when I first tried it. Which I think it was everyone had the same problem. It was broken. And um, when I eventually got around to it, I started it again, and it started me right at the beginning. And I had to redo all my character and go through all the intro scenes. Yeah. And I was like, Nah, fuck this, yeah. fuck this. Um. Other other games I've been having a bit of a play of over Christmas because um, Don't Starve uh, is releasing a multiplayer uh, version oh, yeah, or it's that, released yeah. or something. I, can't, I haven't been following it that closely. Um, I played a bit of Don't Starve again to see if I wanted to get the game, you know, just to kind of remind myself of how it how the format is. And again, although I was enjoying it, I knew that at some point something really unfair was going to happen. Like I was going to get ravaged by a load of bulls overnight and couldn't. Not bulls. Um, <laughs> bulls. Wolves. Ravaged by bulls. No, there's in bulls the in the game as well. I got. Ra- <laughs> I've, I've been ravaged by bulls in that game. <laughs> but uh, I was going to. Yeah, I'll get ravaged by someone. Or, or the one. One thing happened. But one. One time, I was just walking around. Suddenly, started getting cold. The screen started freezing over, and I was dead. I was like, what? I've just I spent <laughs> hours, hours playing this one game. Not you can't you can save it and quit out, but I was, I was like, ah, oh. oh, it's just it was. I liked it. Don't get me wrong, but I've had to mod it and I've had to put in um, like doesn't delete your save every time you die and it loads you back at the last place you were. But the problem with that is the game is built so when you die, that's it, game over. And the problem with loading back at your last save is that exactly the same things happen in the game until you well most of the time so if you're going to get ravaged by wolves one night you'll get ravaged by wolves although you can do a bit of preparation you've only got a small amount of time to do that prep and it's like i'm hours away from from having the right tools for that so then you have to start the game again and prepare for that particular event but anyway, mm. yes, I uh, I'd play that again and wasn't you know I'm probably not going to get the multiplayer. I don't I don't think any of you guys would want to play it anyway, from what I can I've tell. It. Have you? Yeah, I played it quite well. I played it a little bit. I, I actually preferred watching. Um, there was a guy playing through it for the first time on YouTube. And he did a series of it. I preferred watching that than play it myself. Yeah. Yeah. But it I wasn't mean, as fun to play as it was to watch someone play. I think the multiplayer is. I think it's a separate entirely, and it's it's going to be a. You know, chargeable again, so I probably wouldn't yeah. probably wouldn't okay. go for it unless I got it really cheap. Um, also, been playing Stick of Truth at last. I got it hey. got it pretty cheap, and you're exactly right. It is. It's a homage to to South Park. It is just if you're South a South Park. Park yeah. Of course, it is. It's a South Park game. Yeah, I know what I'm saying. It's a homage to like the show. Well, you, it feels like know, the show. You play a Transformers oh. game, and it isn't a homage to to the tra- to the Transformers franchise. You play a My Little Pony game or something. It's just bollocks, isn't it? You play the Simpsons tap out game. You're just tapping. It's like, yeah, okay, there's some cool jokes in there, but fucking hell, this game's shit. You know. <laughs> Whereas you play Stick of Truth, it's a homage to it. It's got interesting mechanics. They're really, really simple. Most of them. I mean, all of the battle stuff. It's turn based, but you you basically 
do the same moves over and over and over and it doesn't really matter what you do there's a little bit of tactics to it but yeah. you know well, you, seen Steve playing quite a bit of it so yeah and it's 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 brilliant don't get me wrong and if you like South Park it's almost like you're watching an episode and you're yeah. in the town yes and it's really I really liked that part of it that was the thing that I loved about it I haven't completed it yet um, I got fairly far into it I've just joined um Kyle's side or something, and uh, yeah, you're, you're with quite it. far into it then. Yeah, um, when, when I was around Steve's, he, got, he, got, he was in Canada, and all Canada was like all eight <laughs> bits. Uh, well, I got I, I've got to the Canada gates, but I couldn't go through for some reason. I probably need some other thing, but it's a yeah. story. You get you go through it as part of the story. There was a there's a section where you uh, you you get abducted by aliens, and, and <laughs> it's quite it's it, I liked it. I, I, the one thing that it made me realise though. Uh, and my wa- my wife has recently gone off watching South Park. She used to quite enjoy it with us, but she's just not into it at the moment. Um, it's very puerile, isn't it? As much as it's got a fair amount of kind of social commentary in it, uh, in terms of the episodes, and you know, it kind of takes the mick out of what's gone on that week. It's still very puerile, and there's a lot of toilet humour in it. And mm. yeah. maybe that's an age thing. Maybe I'm just getting to an age where it's maybe not not as much. Maybe I'm just I'm I getting don't know posher. What- I'll still chuckle at a good, well-timed fart joke. You know, yeah. I, I, I always will. I think. Yeah. But the fact that right click farts—that's it. You just walk around. The, the, there's. The, I don't think it's actually had any benefit anywhere. Yeah. But you walk around and you can fart on people, and they go, "Oh." I know what you mean. That, that's a little too silly, isn't it? Yeah. No, the, fart, I mean, I, the farting's I, a, a main mechanic in the game, man. No, the the fart the the, the magic is, but the right click fart isn't. The the. There's a there's a button or be a button on your controller or whatever that does fart in. There's talk to people and then fart on them. Yeah, the, yeah. There's also another. There's a slight, there's a thing you can do. Have you not had any of the training sessions? With yeah, that's Stan, the magic. Uh, yeah, the, ma- the magic fart stuff. That's yeah, the so magic I mean, in I mean, the game, isn't it? Yeah, but uh, farting as a concept is like a quite a, an, an integral part of the game. Even though going around farting on people is just silly. Yeah, farting in general is actually quite important to the game. It is, but I mean, just walking around and like all <laughs> five hundred people in the town farting yeah. on them, and just to see what they say, it's a little bit like. Oh. And there's a lot of poo jokes, and there's a lot of toilet humour. And I mean, I, again, I got a laugh out of sitting on the toilet and being able to get a whatever they're called. It's a piece of oh, shit, yeah. isn't it? Whatever, and you can chuck that at people in fights and gross them out. But you know, that was that was uh, it was funny once, but then I was like, right, I can't really be asked to do, <laughs> to do that in every toilet that I go to, and you know. But yeah, it, it's a it's a it's a fan service, and they've done it very well. They could have made the combat a bit more interesting, I think. But apart, from, I can't really complain. Apart from that, I think it's still very, uh, very good. Yeah, I liked cool. it. Uh, oh, excuse me. Anyone else played anything over Christmas? I've got a list as long as my arm. Just the games that I've already told you. Basically, Far Cry Four. What most of what I've been playing. You, what did you think of Far Cry Four then? Um, at the first, I was like, "This is really, really Far Cry 3, but with a, in this sort of India-ish setting." Um, I, I'm still enjoying it, and do you know what is funny, Chris? How you were going all, all Ubisoft games are the same. You can actually, you actually get a homestead that was, that's like your ancestral homestead that you can upgrade, just like in Assassin's Creed 3. It's like, for fuck's sake, Ubisoft! So they, they don't have any new ideas, Ubisoft, unfortunately, and all they do is the, the release. They spend so much time and so much resource, and they have hundreds of people working on these games, and they're just banging out our assets. That's all it is. There's no real new mechanics going into any of the games. Mm. They'll be yeah, using... there's a couple of there's a couple of new moves in there, like a couple of new takedowns and stuff. But it's like I say, it's nothing majorly different. Um, I'm still enjoying it, and I'm glad to play through it to the end. But it's not. I was really impressed by Far Cry Three. Mm. This is just another game. In, yeah. a, in a way, it's a nice game because a Far game. because Far Cry Three's already done the impressing, hasn't it? And Far yeah. Cry yeah, Four's exactly. more of the same, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. I I don't think I still will get it when it's cheaper, but I'm not that bothered for the time being. I'd rather I, just play through three again. I stopped playing it, and so did a few people that I know because of that that very thing. It's almost Far Cry Three was a brilliant game, and Far Cry Three ended too soon. It was like I could have played. Another two islands on that game, and still really I, enjoyed it. I one hundred percented Far Cry Three, and I got everything, like yeah. every collectible, every single. And I thought it was a good length, personally. But I, 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 I wanted more right. from it. 
I wanted more from it. But then when I played Far Cry 4, it's just not as interesting a setting. The characters aren't as interesting. It's I just... find the characters less obnoxious. I, I want those state. eagles to fuck off. Those what? Eagles. Eagles. I mean, eagles it's, you just, it, whenever you're not doing something, an eagle is eating your face. <laughs> like cliff yeah. races. Yeah. <laughs> what is it with fly, flying enemies in games? There's something yeah, awful hard. about flying enemies. Not, it's not that they're hard, they're just annoying as shit. They're hard, unless they're coming at you, they're quite hard to shoot out of the air as well. Yeah. Well, I'm the right controller, well. remember, so I have that, that sort of handicap. Yeah, there's a couple of things like that, but um, I find at least the main character, uh, RJ, I did like one of the things I didn't like about Far Cry 3 was the whole like fucking oh bros bros on an island like all wearing backwards caps fucking jumping out of airplanes <laughs> douchebag like that and, and the whole sort of dubstep soundtrack as I, well I heard that. there's no dubstep soundtrack in Far Cry 3 so the, Im- immediately the music makes it kind of a nicer place to be four. like the fact that I enjoy Far Cry 4 sorry the music's nicer I like it more that makes it more pleasant to be I'll around turn the music off. you know that that oh, the intro the intro music to far cry 3 again lou's probably heard it about a million times because it kept crashing oh, when, yeah. I, when i was playing it and it still crashes unfortunately with my new computer so it's not it's not my computer it can't be unless my graphics card's knackered because i've replaced that, everything now isn't that song from far cry 3 isn't that a song that was like released commercially like as in it was in the charts and stuff yeah yeah yeah, yeah it was yeah they do a lot of that with the triple a game so yeah yeah well yeah, far cry 4 doesn't have anything like that no. But um, Far Cry 4 also had a lot of bugs on the PC. Yeah. Uh, the save game wouldn't work properly. Uh, did you have there that are, as well? There's just, no, there's a few there's a few times that I've been like, I'll have someone tagged and track them, and then they'll just go, Way! and just fly across the screen, and then just appear <laughs> on top of a rock somewhere else, and just be like, just carry okay. on walking. <laughs> yeah, no, this happened to me twice, but it was really funny both times it happened. The, these were game enders. Like, I, I'd... Um, I had to do I had to do something in a config file to get rid of the mouse acceleration, oh. and when I got out of the game, yeah, and when I got out of the game um, and came back into it, it was not saving the most recent checkpoint. It was always a checkpoint before. Oh God! But, so I'd get to this 25-minute intro. That's how long the intro is before you can take control of the character. Um, it'd save a checkpoint as soon as you get control of the character. I thought, right, I'll go and fix this bloody mouse problem. Came back in. I had to go through the whole intro again. I had a shower, came out of the shower, it was still introing. So that that wasn't a good start. And I had the same kind of problems with Far Cry 3. This that is Ubisoft all this, this is Ubisoft all over and they keep doing it. They've done it with every single every single across Assassin's Creed game. I haven't got Assassin's Creed Rogue or Assassin's Creed Unity because I know that they're gonna be full of bugs that are just gonna really frustrate me and I'm just gonna be running around collecting shit and climbing up towers. Unity's been famous for its terrible books. Has like, it? I haven't, I haven't yeah. followed it at all because I'm not it's, interested. I've still got Black Flag to finish, actually, and I was quite enjoying that. That looks cool, that one, actually, I have to say. It is, Mainly because you can go around in a ship and shoot people like a pirate. It looks awesome. It's, it's good because that. it's not an Assassin's Creed game. Yeah, and I want the, them to the, make just a game about that. Fuck the Assassin's Creed No, bit. no, just they can't do it. that because it won't sell. That's the problem. They're, they're, they attached all this pirate bollocks to it because it won't sell if they just do a brand new IP. Every oh. single time a AAA developer releases a brand new intellectual property they're, they're they're putting millions and millions of dollars at risk because i mean look at watchdogs they've released that it sold shit tons they probably won't do a second one because it was quite a big flunk no one liked aiden penis or whatever his name is and <laughs> fucking, all the hacking stuff was rubbish you know i'd love it if that was it it was like <laughs> this is chicago my name is aiden penis <laughs> and i'm a, a hacky <laughs> just while we're on the subject of um, like pirate battles, have any of you seen or heard of a game called Dreadnought that's coming this year? I've heard that, no. but that looks very cool. Actually, basically, it's it's not pirates in the sense of old-fashioned stuff. You're basically in gigantic kind of capital ships, yeah. fitted out with loads of guns, and you've got to shoot the shit out of other people on planets and in cool. space. It's like huge ships covered in guns. <laughs> in big battles, it looks really interesting. What actually. does that remind me of? I, is it? It's called I'm, Dreadnought. I'm thinking of um, maybe Star Wars Battlefront Three or something like that. That you could get in ships and you could, yeah. The, I think it was three, and you could. Um, or was it two? No, it's two because three is coming out, isn't it? Battlefront. Th- uh, three. Well, they just—they just, they just call it Star Wars Battlefront. Like they just—I saw oh, yeah. Star Wars Battlefront. Got the other two. 
<laughs> yeah, they just do that. They keep like whenever a new like generation comes out, they go, "Well, we'll just call make a, a sequel, but we'll just call it the first one again." Because oh, the, the last couple of generations don't matter anymore. We don't care yeah. about the older gamers. We just want to bring in the new kids and, and stuff. But anyway, anyway. yeah, Dread, Dreadnought does look uh, sound interesting. Uh, I like. I'll sound put a link that. in the um, in the in the chat and Twitch. Ah, yeah. I remember so, um, Battlefront Battlefront Two though. You could you could get in. Uh, you, you, well, mo most of the levels had vehicles in them, so you get in the a uh, the AT, the art walkers and the ATSTs and the um, speeder bikes, and uh, there was one where you could get in air wings and X wings and uh, fly from your ship to another ship. You could have a fight in the sky, uh, in the in space, and then fly into another ship, and you could take over and blow up the base and stuff. It was quite cool. I really, really enjoyed that game. I played a lot of, I put a lot of time into it. It's a bit flimsy when you're going back and play it now by today's standards, but it was still really cool back then. Shooting wasn't up to much, the first person stuff, but all of the vehicle combat was the shit. That it was mm. the shit. Cool. Um, I also played a bit of Supreme Commander Two. Uh, played a fair amount of the campaign actually, and. I haven't played. Face. I haven't played an RTS for so long now. It was. I get it again. I got it dead cheap in a sale. Um, I haven't played an RTS for so long. I actually forgot how you're supposed to play them, and you're supposed to play them by micromanaging all of the right types of units. So you know, send in your send in your submarines to take out the cruise ships, and then send in your bombers to take out the thingy. But but all I was doing was zooming out, selecting everything, and just sending them. <laughs> Moving just, it at the enemy. Yeah. yeah, and then I'd just I'd, I'd go back I'd go back to the battleground, and there'd just be loads of fighters flying around on top of um, on top of all the enemies, not shooting anybody because there was nothing that they could shoot but the bombers were bombing it's oh god Supreme, but, Com I mean, Supreme Commander 2 is kind of lightweight compared to the original um, yeah but you need about 10 brains to play it it is such a hard game to play it's the hardest RTS game by far well I've I enjoyed it a little bit but I, I can find myself getting just as frustrated with that as I have with every other RTS game ever I think I think if you played um like teamed up with human players against the AI to begin with that is a great way to play it it's really good fun then uh, but the AI doesn't put up much of a challenge when you get to kind of medium quality the medium skill of the game uh, but it is a very it's a very cool game when you zoom in and you see all these massive robots stomping around batting the shit out of each other yeah and the, the huge cannons phallically sort of raising into the air and <laughs> It's just it's very cool game. I've but been it's playing the so campaign. Hard. I did a little I did one or two skirmishes just to see what it was like. And I just I put the AI on like normal because I was and they were just dumb as. They literally were stupid. They were, they did they set up no defences or anything like that at the base and I just sent as soon as I accidentally found the base, the like six tanks that I had with me just sent them, just destroyed everything. And the the, the commander or the ACU unit just stood there and waited for me to kill the entire base and I was like, Alright. That's because he knew he'd been <laughs> tainted by Square Enix, because he was in Supreme Commander Two. I'm surprised he didn't blow himself up at the beginning of the match. Oh, is, is it right? You know more about the politics surrounding the other. It's no, it's not the politics. The Square Enix just every game they touch turns to shit. Final Fantasy Seven. No, that's Square. That's not Square Enix. Oh, okay. Is it? It's sure? when they when it's when they join together and they start doing things like Deus Ex, Human Revolution, and stuff like that. They just ruin games. Bastards. I quite like Human Revolution. Oh, it's wrong. What? Well, sorry, <laughs> Human Revolution. I I really liked Resolu I didn't Re like Resolution. I did like it. Yeah. Uh, well, we should. But then. I do have some bias against Square Enix now. Yeah, I don't you do. remember Square. Square making Final Fantasy VII. You know, I've got it I'm tattooed on my arm. But Square Enix, some of the stuff they've done recently is horrible. All right. You're not going to qualify that with anything. I think they weren't they involved with uh, Watch Dogs. So where weren't they? Don't know. I think there uh, were. Wasn't that a Ubisoft Montreal game? Yeah, but it didn't Square. Uh, don't know. Maybe, uh, I thought they did. But anyway, so Square, if Square Soft as a company, and they just been amalgamated with Square Enix and not. They joined with Enix and they become Square Enix, and that was quite a long time ago now, quite a number of years ago. But aren't they a publisher as well as a developer? Is Square yeah. Soft still develop within that company, or is I don't it? I like... think so. I think I think they they kind of farm it out now to. Whatever. Because I know the Final Fantasy games have just just keep getting prettier and prettier and less good. Apparently, Final Fantasy Thirteen is just a massive waste of time. Apparently, according to most people. Mm. 
That's yeah, the most recent I've, one. I've, I've not even followed them. I, you know, there's 10-2 there's and 13-2. Well, that's the other I thing think... as well. They keep doing a Final Fantasy 13, number 7, and it's like, what, what, what? I, I literally have no idea where Final Fantasy is now. I mean, I've got I've got nine and ten, and want to play nine and ten at some point, um, but I, I I probably won't. I'll be honest with you. The the two too big for me to really invest my time in these days. Seven was a, a massive undertaking, and I loved it, and I I will play that again. But yeah, when maybe when they do a hit, they actually do do a hit. Tell you what, I, I played it on my laptop uh, last year, and I still loved it. Put it on an emulator. Put it on my laptop. Sat with my laptop downstairs on the beanbag, and I was just brilliant. There's something. There's something about the characters in Final Fantasy VII that that really. I. I, I don't know. I, I kind of. I had sympathy for them. I cared about the people that was in my, were in my party. Last time I played it, though, very strangely, I didn't care about Ares at all. I didn't. I couldn't care less. Die. Well, maybe so that's you what it was. Let yourself care. Yeah, I yeah, just you didn't just distance yourself. But I also didn't like the way that she spoke to me. She was like a fairy, hairy, like just she, she didn't seem to have any grounding happy. in reality. Yeah, and, and I was a little bit like, well, I know the thing is, I I kind of ident- as I get older, I identify more with Cloud's personality than anybody else in the game. And like Barrett's just this meathead, ma- m- like mental, really really passionate guy who who would probably snap your neck if you said the wrong thing, you know. Yeah, there's anyway. a lot of that. <laughs> I, when I remember playing, because I played quite a few hours of Final Fantasy VII, and I've kind of thought about maybe downloading it and playing it again. Because um, I was playing your copy, Chris, one time, and then I gave it back to you after having it, had it for years. Years, um, years and years. Yeah. Um, and I, I was like, Ares was just, I knew that she died because it had already been a big part of gaming culture, but I was way liking Tifa more. I just thought she was more fun. She just seemed like nicer, more interesting. She was more useful in fights. She was, yeah, but, I, but again, I didn't all, really all use Tifa. All polygons of them. <laughs> yeah. well, apart from the FMV, the FMV, they were they were very much in your face. In some scenes, they were flapping around the screen. Yeah, yeah the, like, one scene the, where the where the um, where they come out the, of the Mako building and the, that's, yeah. the he, he dri- that that's the one of the coolest things on the planet where he drives the, the bike down the fucking stairs. Oh, the she, Shinra Tower, yeah. Yeah, that Shinra Tower. Cool, sorry, not yeah. Mako building, the shape Shinra. The Mako building. <laughs> You know what I mean? It's all the same thing. Everything's Mako anyway. Mako's everywhere. Um, yeah, and he drives the thing down, and she kind of some. I can't remember who's driving the uh, the little truck thing, the little tricycle. Uh, isn't it? Isn't it Barrett? Someone drives it through a sign, and she's kind of stood there, and she turns round, and her boobs go. <laughs> it's just. <laughs> <laughs> but it's one of the best F and V sequences I've seen for a long time. Like when I was young, it was brilliant the, the way they did it, but. It was really weird that it stood stood out from the game so much. It they didn't even try to make the game look like it. Or, well, I mean, they probably couldn't. That, that's but. actually why there were, there were no HD remakes or anything like that because it was done by so many different people. The FMV is really inconsistent because it was done at different times by different people, and all of the assets have been lost. I was going to say it's probably the case, isn't it? It'd have to be a complete remake. But yeah. that's no real excuse because they could make money out of this. There is no way in hell that They're every making single money out of it by re-releasing the same shitty version they've been releasing since the PC re- uh, remake. That's the easy way, isn't it, for them? That they can easily make money that way. But if they released a hit, they actually put the effort in to do a HD remake. They'd sell it all again, over again, and they'd probably sell it to a lot more people as well because the story is still good and the characters are still good. I reckon if they were going to make that game these days, it'd cost over $100 million. It, Well, I don't care. They'd make way more than that. Look they at the can, they're games. making lots of money from the shitty Final Fantasy games they are releasing. I was going to say, wouldn't, couldn't they just take the, the sort of the um, their engines and stuff from maybe Final Fantasy Thirteen and just it's no, not the engine. no. It's, it's, no, it's not the engine. It's all of the the assets. It's all of the artwork in the game, and the the, the there's just a lot there. So you tell it. You see, you're saying that just designing a bunch of new stuff, like the actual just the artwork of it, would cost a hundred million because the physics yeah. of it are already there. Yeah, it's not the engine that's going to cost any money. With any game's budget, it's yeah, nothing I, to do I, with the engine. It's the it's the amount of assets you've got to create for it. With with my game, I have already written. In fact, I wrote most of the code for my game. Uh, fair enough, I'm using an engine, but you know, on top of that, I've written quite a lot of code. I wrote most of that within six months, and I'm doing very little now that isn't an art asset. I'm not import. You know, I'm I'm waiting for my art team to give me all of these models that they have to create because. 
with every single model, the, the higher fidelity they are, or the, the, the better they look, the more um, what they call vertices and, uh, and edges they have to put into into it in order to uh, make it look nicer. Um, and there's also other tricks that they do with um, uh, with texturing and, and laying things over the top of each other and stuff. But I won't go into that into too deep, too much detail. But the more the more verts and, and things they get, they have to actually basically manually create each one of these these verts and, and triangles and and, and all this, and you have to do that, and then you have to UV map them, which is a, a laborious process in itself. Then you have to texture everything on top of that. Then you have to animate every single frame. And fair enough, there are a lot of tools out there these days that make these things quicker. It's just a lot of time and effort. There's there's hundreds of man hours that go into one character, one person yeah. that you have to you have to. It's create. not re it's not even really the characters. It's actually the world. There's a yeah. lot yeah. of world. Yeah, in Final Fantasy all right. Let, let me let me rephrase it. If they were to make another Final Fantasy sequel, would it cost more than remaking Final Fantasy VII? Like if they if they were to just forego making Final Fantasy fourteen and just make remake Final Fantasy VII instead, that's yeah, what I think I'm saying. Th th there is there is a, there's something other than the financial <coughs> aspects to this, and they've, they've said that they did feel they did only to remake the game if they could feel they could do it justice. And uh, I think there's, there's there's quite a lot of kind of Japanese honor going on here where they think that. They're going to lose their honour if they try to remake the game and it's not right. There are fan services that have done remakes and done, you know, in different engines and different using different tools and like even Little Big Planet. Someone's recreated the entire Final Fantasy VII game in Little Big Planet. Uh, I know it, it's bollocks. It's it, it's not as good as the game. You know, it's just a two D place anyway. But they've recreated the whole thing. But it's they're still good. These things they're still interesting. They've done them. They've done them justice. A proper studio, the studio that did this in the first place, with access to uh, the copyright and and you know no holds barred. Let's let's redo it. Take you know scene for scene, but just make all the art assets nicer. There's um, no way that they couldn't do that nice. The Resident the Resident Evil remake was made by a Japanese company and was for the GameCube, and they're doing they're doing an HD remaster of that for current gen. Was fucking brilliant, and it was loved by the fans of the original. It, well, they had a GameCube anyway, <laughs> because yeah. it was great. It was done by a Japanese company. They they not only did the original game justice, but they made it better. Well, I think the the Metal Gear Solid remakes. I think they're all um, they were done done by Blue Point, which I think is a, a Japanese company. No, that's that's an that's just an HD sheen on Metal Gear Solid Two. I'm talking about the Resident Evil remake where they rebuilt that game from the ground up. Like, look well, they at had Resident to, yeah. Evil. If you look at a game, look at a screenshot from the GameCube Resident Evil, and look at a screenshot from the PS One. Different, it's a different game. They they built that game from the ground up, but it is Resident Evil One at the same time. It's uh, that's the sort of thing I'm talking about, and that was by a Japanese company. It's Capcom, so whether they had any on to begin with is questionable. But I think I don't know. That I, I'm kind of with Chris on this. Like I'm not even into Final Fantasy, but the the amount of people that are into Final Fantasy that just want a prettier updated version of Final Fantasy 7 is pretty much all of them. Yeah, it's me and too. They, they're kind of like, just, you know, kind of just make... I think your customers what they want. Like, you know if what I mean? That, if that game, if they improved the control system, you know, when he's just running around the world, made it analogue, they improved, obviously, all of the art assets, that's all they need to do. And I know that I know they're going to have to rebuild it from scratch and make sure that it's all perfect, otherwise the fans will destroy them. But that's their job. We pay them to do that. Do you know what? I've had, a, I've had a thought, though. There's one thing that would be awful. Voice acting. Oh, they don't I have don't, to do voice acting. But they will. They, then they'll make... You know, all the they Final will. Fantasy games have full voice acting now. Yeah. I don't want that in Final Fantasy VII. They, I, I they wouldn't do that. The dialogue. I they wouldn't imagine that. someone they reading would. Barrett's dialogue. <laughs> <laughs> It'd have to be Mr. T. It would have to be Rampage Mr. T. Rampage Jackson. <laughs> God damn. That'd be quite cool, actually. That just him, not any of the characters. No, Troy I don't, Baker would probably play Cloud. I don't think they'd do that. I think they would. I think if they're going to remake it. They'd have to because there'd why? be a lot of people who played other recent Final Fantasy games. No. Nah. Why? Why do I have to? Why do I have to now listen? Uh, the, read. What, why do I have to read? I don't know about yeah. you. I don't know about you, but when I'm watching FMV. Oh, and I'm hearing voice acting. I'm reading stuff as well. I always I, read. If there's I, subtitles sub on, I'll always read. Yeah, I do. I turn them off. I turn the subtitles off usually. I should do because it does distract from watching the actual FMV, and I don't need it because the the sounds are there. But I always read them if they're on. And I, I, it's not that I'm an old school gamer or anything like that. I just think 
I, I don't think they need it. Look at this influx of indie games that are in uh, coming on at the moment. I don't mind reading loads and loads of text in these indie games because they can't afford voice actors. I've got no issue with that. It's perfectly fine. It's it's quaint, if anything. You know, it it adds mm. to the experience. And as Zelda's see- never had it. Ah. And there's nowhere near as much dialogue in a Zelda game as there is in a Final Fantasy one, but they've never gone voice acting. Fucking all you get dialogue. is Link going, ha, ha, ha! That's all you get from Link, you don't get any... But they, other... they, I mean, the, the <laughs> Zelda games obviously have um, an, an owner who values the game, whereas a Final Fantasy series now is a cash cow. That's a fair show. And it's just it's pandering, not specifically to the fans needs but I don't know they're trying I, to make it cinematic I think there's frustrated movie makers to be honest Square yeah, Enix Potatoes just seems like a lot of that Potatoes just said a remake isn't for the people who played the recent games I agree it's a fan but, service it's it should be it should be as per the original but just looking yeah. a bit better I mean you know, there'll be purists out there that go why have you why have you updated Cloud's model I like to the fact that he's only got six polygons in his entire body you know <laughs> I, 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 but yeah that's true there will be people that always, there's always going to be someone that complains if they did it and they did voice acting I wouldn't sit there and complain about it I mean I, no actually no I would complain about I it it's me about it, but I think they would do that I think the, the I can't imagine him doing a really nice version of the game and then having those blue dialogue things pop well, up. It just doesn't fit. Look at look at what they've done with Metal Gear. You know, Kiefer Sutherland playing bloody thing. I mean, all we've all we've had our discussions about all this and why, but he really is lackluster in comparison to David Hayter, who fair enough isn't the best voice actor in the world, but he's Snake. You know, voice but actor. The role. But they've got <laughs> a triple A guy because because sorry, they've got a, a you know a, a star. Because who is current and relevant? Because they want more people to play the game, and that's probably, what Kojima um, Studios turned into. Unfortunately, the you know the, probably the, haven't, haven't they mo his sort of performance a little bit as well? Not his not not the physical stuff because he's getting a bit old, but like his facial stuff. They've actually made it more to make the character look more. I'm still thinking they might have Hater in there in some way because Hater's even hasn't he made a few ambiguous tweets about it as well uh, last I don't, year. <laughs> You could, you, could you, read, could read into that. you could read anything into anyone's tweets, so can't you? So True. I wouldn't, I wouldn't read too much into that. But yes, I am still of the opinion that David Hater will be in that game in some way, or he'll be in the next game or something. You know, probably this game. What well, we've this already game. talked about. Let's just not bang on about that. Yeah. again. <laughs> that's out in. <laughs> that's out, without, I'm dying it inside. All. It's out in May, isn't it, or something? Uh, I think so. Yeah. Or is it next year that it's out? Or is well, it it's the, out. It's this oh, year. They said they said fourth quarter of uh, 2015, so it's probably going to be they pushed it back. Yeah. Okay. Wait, anyway. Ah, well, it'll get pushed back again anyway. So it's fine. One game I did play that I was uh, I have enjoyed over the Christmas period was Hitman Absolution. Now, ah, well, I haven't yeah. played many of the Hitman games previous to this. I, I played one a good while back. It might have been Hitman Two. Um, I was in a fairground and I had to. Go and kill. It was an old abandoned fairground. I had to go and kill someone, obviously, and then escape the fairground. You know? Do you remember that, Sam? Did you play it? That's from uh, that's from Blood Money, I think. The Blood Money. that was the last PS2 version game. So it was like there was Hitman Two on the PS2. Then the, the, after that, they did Hitman Contracts. Then Blood Money because they stopped numbering them after a while. So they've got. Um, I guess that's Hitman Four. I guess you'd say then. they've got a, a contracts version in Absolute. Have you played Absolution by the way? Either of you? No, I kind of want to because I was a fan of the game and it took the that that the sequel was so long after it. And if you remember that developer, IO developed what they're called. They made the uh, Kane and Lynch games, which were meant oh. to be awful. And I was like, wow. They are. These, that developer's gone down the toilet, and then Absolution came out, and apparently it was really good. So the first, I got the first Kane and Lynch game, and it was the most terrible game in the on the planet. And I can't really tell you why. I just I didn't like the characters. The control system was horrible. I just don't I don't remember specifically what it was. I just played a few levels, and I was like, "This is tripe. This is absolute shite." So, let's get, let's but get what's rid. Absolution like then? Absolution, um, I believe it's simpler. Than the other, um, the other Hitman games. I think it's been dumbed down a little bit. However, I really like it. I'm really enjoying the experience. I played about three or four levels, and I've, I've also it's very freeform. Um, well, there's there's that they incentivize you to 
go into the level, complete it how you want to complete it, because there's a million different ways to do it, and then go back in and complete it again and get more um, points or get a different score. Or it's like I I went onto the one of the levels and. Um, the first time I ran in just to see what happened, I ran in all guns blazing and just shot the target, and then everybody killed me. Um, I, and I knew that isn't the way to play the game, but it is an option in the game if you really want to. Then the second time, I uh, it was I was it was one of the first one of the early levels, or I could even do the first level. Um, you're supposed to kill the, the the king of Chinatown or something, and he's in the middle. But he walks around the level and does different things. He goes and eats some sushi at one point, and then he goes and um, speaks to his drug dealer and gets some cocaine or something from somewhere. But this drug dealer also walks around and does different things, and he moves like the drug package around and does things. Um, but what you can do is you can take the disguise of the drug dealer, go and meet the king, take him back to your... Um, like your little the, the drug dealer's little base. If you dress as the drug dealer, the like the the bent coppers let you in, so you, you don't get you don't get attacked by them. Um, but you can also poison the drugs that he's just about to take from you with with some uh, fish, uh, sushi fish, that whatever it's called. Love fish, yes, fugu. Fugu, that's yeah. it. Yeah. Um, I said gararufi a, a few while, and gararufi they're them fish that eat your feet. So I was on, it was on another it was on another stream and I said oh yeah yeah poisoned oh, it with some gararufi fish. <laughs> I was like, oh, dear. Just it with water type. <laughs> yeah, oh. Just melting into it. Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, but this fish can be used in a number of different ways. You can poison the sushi, you can poison the drugs, you can do other things with it. But there's loads of different ways to do each mission, and it's quite interesting, and I quite like it. I went into someone's house and. Uh, there was about 50 guards in this house, but one of the ways, it's quite easy to avoid people, but one of the ways you can kill the target, or the, no, the target in this one, it's actually a scripted death, but there's a lot of different ways that you can get to the target, and like you can like poison the food, and there's obviously a lot of it's poisoning. <laughs> but there's uh, there's also, you know, you can, you can either kill everybody or you can not kill everyone, but the incentive is to not kill anyone because you lose points if you... you can. It's like in a Deus Ex, a Human Revolution. If you don't do the stealth route, you don't get as many experience points. So it's a bit different. It's like you start off with a certain amount of money and then it runs down. Oh, no, no, it does that. There's another mode, a contracts mode, and it's uh, people online have set certain challenges... Um, within the levels of the game, I believe. So one of them I went on, and it was a dead simple one, and it was just a case of you walk into a strip club, uh, there's a guy at the door, and that's your target, but you have to kill him as quickly as possible and as efficiently as possible. So you wait until he walks out of the... on this particular one anyway. He has a bit of a, a Barney with the, the, the bouncer. You wait till he walks out. Just as he gets past the guards, you garrot him, throw him in a bin, and then run to the end of the level. And I got like nearly, I got nearly the highest score in the world doing that. And but there's probably better, quicker ways of doing it. And surprisingly, the leaderboards aren't full of people with millions and millions of points above you. You know, like most online um, leaderboards are these days. I quite liked it. I'd, I got it cheap in a sale, and I, I'm glad I did. And I, I will have another go. We'll have a. a you good play only of it. get games cheap in a sale now. I, I do these days. Yeah, I mean that's like cheap apart, bastard. Do you, no, get fucked. Get fucked. I've spent. I've got spent thousands of thousands. pounds on games. Thousands of pounds on games and consoles over my life. So fuck off. <laughs> but no, I, I still. Um, I don't buy console games at the moment, because they're still 40 or 50 pounds and there's not really much you can do about it unless you get your consoles cracked, which I've never ever done. I don't never think you can with modern stuff, can you? Probably. There'll yeah. be a way. There probably uh, is. Or I could get, you know, I'm saying you could get emulators but you probably can't. But yeah. no, I'd, I'd, I always like to buy my games and make sure that I've got legit copies. I mean, obviously I've got a few from when I was younger, you know, I've got Command and Conquer and that. But I've actually got a full version of Command and Conquer as well. But anyway, um, I buy all my PC games whenever there's sales on. Because I've got so many, what's the point in spending full price on a game? Because I've got a stack of things that I'm catching up with, so unless it's a brand new game that I really, really, really want, mm. then I don't see the point. It's like Borderlands, uh, the pre-sequel. I only bought that at full price, or nearly full price, um, because we were going to play it that weekend. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't have bought it. I'd probably put it in my wish list and maybe got it in a sale when it's like three quid or something. Mm. But these these publishers and AAA game studios, they make a fortune anyway. I don't feel guilty about it. Certainly don't feel guilty about getting things in a sale. Not these days. No opinion on that, no? No. 
I, I think that's totally fair. It's they they put the sale on, buy stuff in the sale. It's simple. At least I'm buying stuff. Yeah. At least I'm not downloading cracking stuff like a lot of people do. I've, I've uh, again, I've said I've done that a, a bit in the past, but I'm not uh, these days. It's not it's not really my thing. <sighs> so, what what's people looking forward to in 2015? Uh, uh, any any highlights that anybody wants to be shouting about that we've not already mentioned in the earlier ones, perhaps? Phantom pain, phantom pain, <laughs> phantom pain, phantom pain, phantom pain, phantom pain. Apart from Kiefer Sutherland. Well, the following Metal Gear that. Solid takes place between 1984 and 1986. <laughs> That's the same period as 24 introduction. Damn it! <laughs> I, um... Yeah, that's my main game that I'm looking forward to, and that will be something I will probably pay full price for on the day of release. I shouldn't because it goes against everything I stand for, but <laughs> I'm I'm gonna. I think I probably will because and I don't want anything spoiled. I want to be one of the first people to play it and complete it. I want to, you know, I want to be. When I get that, I will sit down and play it constantly until it's done. Probably even quit my job if I have one. Then. Not do any game dev, just just live Metal Gear, Phantom Pain. Um, but apart from that, I am looking forward to. There's a, a game that um, uh, that excites me considerably. In fact, because I'm a massive fan of the guy that's doing it, and I'm a massive fan of the all of the games that he's he's ever done. Um, Ron Gilbert is teamed together with uh, another guy. Sorry, sorry, other guy. You're probably someone really famous, but Ron Gilbert is the guy that I know. I'm sorry. And here, uh, the, he's teamed together with him, and he's done a Kickstarter for uh, a, n- a new adventure game called Thimbleweed Park. And it looks like it's going to have the same art style as um, like the Maniac Mansions of the world. Gary Winnick. Gary Winnick. What does he do? What's he doing on it? Does it say... Gary is- Winnick is a game developer, writer, artist, animator... Right, so yeah, yeah. co design Maniac, Man- Maniac Mansion. All oh, right, so they're getting back. All oh, right, so it's the team getting back together. Awesome. Yeah. Anyway, Maniac Mansion. For those who don't know what Maniac Mansion is, because it is, it was a fairly niche thing when it was out. It's an, a point and click adventure game, one of the very early ones. Um, I believe it was on the Commodore sixty four. I may be wrong there. I it was, played, yeah. it, I played it on the NES. Um, and that's where I discovered it, and that's kind of where I discovered adventure games. But it was one of those things where, to get in the mansion, there was six different ways. But a Maniac Mansion was really... Um, uh, it was unique in the fact that you could break the game very, very easily. Because if you did something wrong, and there was no other options to get past a particular puzzle, you couldn't complete the game. Um, but that was kind of half of the charm of it. You heard of uh, a game called Day of the Tentacle? Yep. Sam? Yeah, I've heard a lot of these. It's, I've heard of it, but can we just go back to Maniac Mansion? Briefly? No, 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 I still haven't finished that. I oh, was right, okay. saying Day of the Tentacle is the second game in the Maniac Mansion um, franchise, and the tentacles came from Maniac Mansion. It's it's a it's a point sorry so it's a point and click adventure game basically to, to get in the front door of the house or to get into the house you have to find a key under a mat and use the key to open the door. What you can also but you've got three people that you need to get into the house. Yeah. One of these people can get imprisoned, or all of them can get imprisoned, but you need two people in prison in order to get out of that particular prison in one one way, or you can get a key to get out of the prison. Um, there's loads of things in it. It's it's quite a complex game. It's a, it's a, I've seen it. I saw Game Grumps do a playthrough of it that was most amusing. Yeah, and it's, uh, yeah, I think I think to complete it, you have to get somebody imprisoned in the basement. Yes, you do. Well, the the, the basement is actually where you get to the um, the, the secret lab. Yeah. Um, and it turns out that the people spoiler alert for a really old game the people that live in the house aren't the actual bad guys it's just isn't there something else affecting the people that live there well I'm going to spoil it I don't I'm, I don't care the, spoilers from 1986 or yeah. whatever it came out there's actually quite a lot of different endings I think there's seven or eight different endings to the game um, I, I think I've got them all now I think I've done them all because I, it was one of those games that I played to death as I said one of them is um uh, there's a, there's a, the main antagonist is, is something called Meteor, and Meteor has come down and he's taken over the brains of the uh, Doctor Ed, and Doctor Ed is the scientist who lives in the house. <laughs> Not the uh, this talking is, horse. This is all off to, uh, This is all off my head, by the way. So if I'm getting facts wrong, I do apologise. Um, so yeah, Doctor, uh, this this Doctor Ed, he's 
he's at, he's been brain controlled by this meteor. But you can you can either one of the one of the ways to complete the game is to put the meteor in the back of a car. In the, in the boot of a car, lock the car, and then use some rocket fuel in the car and send him to the moon. <laughs> That's one of the ways to complete the game. Another one is, um, uh, oh, there's a there's a way that you can you can hold up the. Oh no, you can call the meteor police. So you you use like a ham radio and you get like tube um, vintage tubes and stuff from a Vectrola or something uh, in the living room, and you put that into. It's, it, it, this is like the end puzzle of loads of puzzles in order to get there. There's also timed events in the games as well that, that happen as you're going around the game. Anyway, right, so what, this other one, you get this tube, put it in a radio, and you use the radio to contact the meteor police, and the meteor police come back, come down and take him away. Another one is you can get a letter published. One of the people that you can have, it, and it depends on who you've got in your, in your party as well. Uh, one of the party members is a, like a surfer dude. Another one is a writer. Another one's an aspiring photographer, and they've all got different things that they can and can't do in the house. So one of the, if you've got the writer in, you can use her to write a letter, and you can uh, you can use that use that letter to get you can send the letter off and get it published. Uh, and and some I can't remember what happens there. That's another way to get the, to the end of the game. And there's loads of loads of little cool things. One of them is a musician, and you can you can record musician uh, music with one of the tentacles, and the tentacle can get the the music published by the same publishing house that could publish the letter. And you send it off, but you have to in order to send it off, you have to find a stamp from somewhere, and then you have to use a stamp with a wet sponge in the microwave in order to in order to like make the stamp stickable onto the envelope and send the envelope out but you go have to go out and post the letter manually um, and then pull the flag down otherwise it won't go off another way to get in the house as well is to I'm sorry this is this is just me going all spuffy <laughs> you're, about you're going so, really really I, love, I, I absolutely loved this game though but it's it's uh, Ron Gilbert also did Monkey Island so that's a you know another. So have they been long-time game. collaborators then? I believe yes. so. I mean, I don't know if they've done anything for a while. I haven't. I don't follow him fanatically, but I love his writing style. I love his game design. I love the fact that. I mean, I think Monkey Island was fairly linear in terms of how you could, how you could progress in the game. I can't remember if there was multiple ways to do it, but the story in Monkey Island was great. You know, it was fantastic in itself. Very very funny. So yeah, um, this. Uh, uh, they said Maniac Mansion is is a, an amazing game, and Thimbleweed Park's got the same kind of um, s- same kind of art style, or it looks like it's going to have the same kind of art style. And he's also obviously um, improved his uh, his his writing you know, or game design skills over the years and stuff. So he's yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. He's got quite a big uh, big Kickstarter, they've got six hundred thousand dollars behind them. So I'm hoping it's going to be a good. A good thing, and um, that's slated for release this year. Hopefully, is it? Uh, I think it's. I, I think I read today somewhere actually it was 2016. But I'm looking forward to that game, and I'll be following the progress of it. I'm, I follow him on Twitter, and he posts a blog date, a blog update every day. And uh, yeah, I'm. I'm very much. Uh, just get on it if you like any of the old adventure games. If you're if you're into your old uh, uh, Indiana Jones and the Lost City of Atlantis, and you know. Monkey Island and all that other kind of stuff. Get get on it. Get on uh, Thimbleweed Park. Yes, so I'm looking forward to that. Fair enough. <laughs> is it? Does that kind of thing appeal to you guys? I mean, or is it just? Uh, is it just me that? I never really it? got away with the um, with those graphic adventures. Probably the one that I played the most was um, was uh, um, the one set in France. Oh, uh, uh, broken. oh, broken sword! Broken yeah. sword, broken sword! Yeah, I never liked yeah. that. I played I, that. I quite liked that. I quite that's, enjoyed that. That's the only one that I really got into. I got a little bit into it. I got. I went through some sewer and then came up outside of a shop, um, and I got out of the sewer vent. And I, I don't think I did. It was much very after hard. That. It was a, yeah. Got it stuck was quite a bit hard. In that At the same time, as well, I was also playing um, uh, Discworld, the Terry Pratchett. I'd like to play that because I can appreciate that since I've read lots of Discworld novels. I never read any of the books, and I don't really know what it's about. I just know it's a little bit crazy. Uh, that's all I really know about them. Um, but I, but I, I played the game with my friend, and we couldn't work anything out in it. I was a kid, though, so... But I used to play Monkey Island and everything else, so... There's, um, there's something that's popped up recently in one of my friends' posts on Facebook, but there's, um, there's an archive of um, DOS games that are emulated <laughs> online. They, they've mm. got DOSBox emulator working in the browser... And I've got cool. a load of games on on this website that you can play in your browser. 
What the DOS stuff? I've got, um, I think I've got Monkey Island emulated uh, on my so local that's machine. That's Gun VM, isn't it? Yeah, because I was, I was, I wanted to play Monkey Island three and four. I think they were. Um, and I think, I think all the, all the LucasArts games work on Scum VM, so yeah. And I played three. It wasn't. It's not as it's not as good as one and two. I mean, uh, Biggs has just said I love Monkey Island two, and it was easily the best one. Monkey Island two, even though even though one still had its charms, you know, they actually did a HD remake of it on consoles a while back. Monkey Island and uh, oh, was, wasn't it on the um, wasn't it released on mobile as well, like on my iPad been, yeah. and stuff. I think I, it was. It was on Xbox Live anyway, or Xbox Arcade. I remember. Look, I downloaded the demo, and you could press select, and it would change from the old graphic style to the new graphic style, like like that immediately, and it was quite cool. I didn't download yeah. it or play it because I played it to death and already got it. Sorry, Sam, were you going to say something? I was just going to say that's quite a cool feature. I, I can't even remember I, uh, how good the... I think it had voice acting as well, actually, if you press select. It had voice acting when you went into the HD one, and then it, it went back into text only. Fair enough. Mm. That would be fun for like the first two times that you press select, and then you just stick to, pick one and stick with it after that, wouldn't you? Totally. Um, um, a game I'm looking forward to, I'm not sure if it's coming out this year, I assume it is, um, is Battleborn. And I've deliberately yeah, tried not to look at too that. much stuff. The trailer for that is so good. Um, and I just think Gearbox, having done Borderlands 2, which is one of my favourite games now, um, are going to do some great stuff with it. But then Blizzard came out with theirs, their, their, their version of the same thing, really. I can't remember the name of it. What is it? Did you see all that stuff just before Christmas? What, sorry? Uh, Blizzard have got a new franchise coming out. Um, which is very similar to Battleborn. Yeah, Gearbox Evolved. also did uh, Evolved. Colonial Marines, so just, you know. Isn't it Evolved? Uh, I Overwatch. Overwatch. Overwatch, it's called. But the, these, yeah. these like, four-player, or, or however many-player, first-person shooter games, I enjoy playing with you guys. But, I mean, I haven't even been back to Borderlands, a pre-sequel, and the, played the, it on this, my own. These games are nothing like Borderlands, by the way. These are more like Team Fortress 2. Right. So the the competitive multiplayer games mm. and they kind of borrow from MOBA style games like their Defense of the Ancients, Dota. Yeah, I'm already bored. I like the sound of that. <laughs> I'll, I've I'll always wanted it... to see I've always wanted to see a MOBA game in first person and that's what both of these games are doing now. And um, I think that could be really interesting. Just to just address a question that's been uh, raised in the chat by Skateboard ninety five. Is that is that when you were born ninety five? Because if so, you are very young for our or audience. Or he's broken ninety five skateboards during oh, his time of skating. Maybe, maybe. Um, so any any game dev, or is this just a talk show thing? Um, I am a game developer. I uh, run a studio called Nineteen Stone Ninjas. Lewis is also a game developer, and he is currently uh, developing. Procrastinating. <laughs> yeah, he's procrastinating, but he is he's currently. Um, developing a game called Archaos, which is a remake of the original 1980-something? 84. 84 Chaos. Um, the, uh, Chaos Reborn has actually been um, redone by the original maker. It's on maker. Early Access now. Yeah, it's on, it's on Early Access, and apparently it's getting good It's getting good comments. It's uh, it's It looks quite good. But nice. Lou's been working on this game forever, and he's rewritten it six times. I'm working on a stealth... Um, hacking and parkour first person game and if you just uh, look at my twitter at 19 ninjas you'll see the game that i'm working on i do stream most days uh, on another channel which is bid the dog on twitch so yes unfortunately this is a show about uh, kind of we talk about game dev a little bit but mainly we just talk about games and uh, we talk about things like uh, well we usually have a subject every week although this is our first show in the new year so we're just having a bit of a general natter and catch up and these are, you know, these are the games we've played and the things we're looking forward to. Um, normally, we have a subject such as the last show we did was death in games, and we were specifically talking about death <laughs> mechanics and and how death is implemented and what we think about it and things like that. And sometimes we have guests on. So yes, it's a it's a close close knit friendly show with friends basically. And Sam is really good at holding a pint without drinking it. Like, you know those dogs that balance like biscuits on the head. Yeah, very yeah. disciplined. Yeah. <laughs> Sam, yeah, Sam. That's actually Sam's uh, webcam. That's what he's trying to say. I think. Yeah, yeah. I'm also very good at keeping the liquid perfectly still, which is <laughs> really difficult. Really difficult. Especially when it's over, this of, over this length of time. 
But I'm not a game developer. I'm just uh, I'm just an ordinary pleb <laughs> who happens to play games every now and then. Yes, uh, but we we're all old school gamers, and basically this show is just kind of our catharsis of kind of just getting it out there and catching up. We all live in different parts of the country, you see, so we uh, we kind of get on here and uh, have a few few people who like to watch us. So, hello, skater man, boy, whatever you are, ninety five thing. <laughs> Um, the fact that you just got their name wrong means that they're going to just leave. Yeah, sorry, mate. Away. Sorry, mate. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, what were we talking about before I, I rudely interrupted with a, a rude uh, interruption? Battleborn and, 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 and the like. Yeah, Battleborn is yeah. uh, something I'm looking forward to. Yeah, we, we established it's shit. Let's move on. Okay, that's fine. Cool. Um, yeah. speaking, speaking of things that are born, um, I'm looking forward to a game called Bloodborne, which is by FromSoft. Um, so it's going to... It's, it's, uh, because they don't, um, they don't, they don't seem to like doing direct sequels. Or that director, um, whose surname is Miyazaki, not the director of the Studio Nintendo. Ghibli films, oh, but no, another no. another guy who's called Miyazaki, not... who directed uh, Demon Souls and Dark Souls, but he didn't do Dark Souls too, because I don't think he likes doing sequels. So he does spiritual successes, which is what Bloodborne looks to be. And it looks like they're speeding up the combat slightly and they're injecting um, a little bit of. Gunplay into it oh, right. as well. No, I've read a, I've read a review in OPM about uh, Bloodborne, and I pro- I'll probably give that a go. I would got Dark Souls uh, One, mm. Demon Souls. Yeah, Dark Souls One, <coughs> but it doesn't work, <coughs> and I can't be bothered oh. to get it working at the moment. Oh, I want to give it a go. I really want to try it. Got it in a sale, so I thought I'd uh, give it a go. You know, but it's, it is what it is. We're gonna have to call you Chris. Got it in a sale, Seabock. <laughs> it goes on much longer like this. Chris won't pay won't pay full price for a game, Seabock. Don't care how I get it, whether it be a, a sale or a mate giving it to me or a or Kinguin or something like that. Yeah, um, but I like the way that that game. I just like the the the, the really. It's really hard to describe how that they make combat of of the sprite on a screen that you control with a controller feel really heavy and physical, like. The way that they do that in all those games, I've always thought is really impressive. It looks like it has that, but a bit faster, and it, it's an even more dark and unpleasant setting as well, which is quite impressive. It's it almost looks sort of like Victorian London, as if possessed by demons and hellish creatures and stuff. And they do, they're doing looks, a lot of that cool. since Dishonored. They're doing a lot of that. Uh, yeah. Dishonored, I think Dishonored's style is beautiful. Though. Do you I've know what? Found um, the. There's an artist um, called uh, John Atkinson Grimshaw. Who, What's that who's face kids? for? I'll tell you in a minute, and you'll pull in the same face. Go on. Go on. Okay. I, all right. I was in game the other day, and and I don't know if you saw my tweet about this, but it was it was a bit upsetting. So I I, I, I tweeted while I was in the shop, which I don't normally do. Um, uh, I was in game, right? I was looking at the Xbox 360 uh, part X's, the old, you know, because I wasn't looking at the real, the the, the new games, because. I don't pay full price. You're not um, getting them in a sale. Yeah, so I was looking at the the part X's and there was like a couple on there. They're like you know three quid, four quid for for good games, but I already have them. So what's the point in getting them? But anyway, um, th- these two guys, t- two kids, they had facial hair, so they can't have been that young. Come and stood next to me, one with an umbrella. It wasn't even raining, and it's the he kept pointing. Right, he kept pointing at different games and going to his mate. Yeah, that's all right. That one, it's, uh, that shit. That one pointed at Dishonored and went, "That is absolute shite, mate. You don't want to get that." And his Hell, mate went, really? and his ma- right, and his mate <laughs> said, "Yeah, mate, I heard that as well." Where? Yeah. Yeah. Where did you hear that? I'm not saying that it's universally cr- critically acclaimed or anything, and it didn't get ten out of ten in Game of the Year from every publisher and ev- not publisher every bloody publication on the planet, but. <laughs> These these are the people who keep in the Call of Duty franchise going. Yeah, he, that, no, that that I these hadn't are finished. The people who buy FIFA every year. I hadn't finished. He then picked up the most recent Modern Warfare and went and bought it. And I just I was this close to committing murder right there. I was just like, oh mate, oh god, you think, oh, you know, this just... is one of the one of the best games made in the last five. It years. It is exactly it was a new IP which we don't get fucking nearly enough of. Most of the games that I that I like, I'm looking forward to. I admit, are sequels. Yeah. And I I want new shit. I've not seen any like new games that are coming out that I'm like, oh, a new IP that's really intriguing me. I'm hoping there will be some more announced as we go into the year. Well, the better I'd be. 
But I want some new stuff, new I not like just like as I said, the, the, you, eighth, the eighth sequel to a game I've already played before. You're not you gonna know? see it. You're not gonna see it, I'm afraid. You, uh, well, you are, but the thing is, it's going to come out of the blue like Dishonored did. I, I mean, I, I think mm. I heard about Dishonored pretty much just before it was released. Whereas I followed Thief pretty much all through development, and when I got it, it was shit. I've been I've been following Dishonored since pretty much the the, the day that it was announced because it was yeah, all over the, the publications that I read. Um, I, I didn't know anything about it until pretty much it was released. And I remember seeing like the early trailer for it and thinking that looks awesome. Like I just love the art style of it straight away. I love the fact the, that the it was atmosphere. written. I love the fact that was it Warren Spector that wrote it. The guy who did uh, Deus Ex. Uh, don't think Warren Spector was, was involved in it. I think it's, it, was, it was. It was. It was. Someone in. De someone. Um, uh, doing was Deus someone Ex did, was involved yeah, in it. Yeah, it was. Yeah, but it wasn't Warren Spector. They also had. I think the, was it the level designer or the one of the uh, artists. The, the Russian artists guy from... who did um, Half Life Two. Harvey yeah. Smith. Harvey Smith. Harvey ah, Smith, yeah. That and was it. Um, the other guy is, I can't remember his name, he's a Russian guy, but he's the one who designed City 17 in Half Life 2. And you can that, see that when you look at both the games. That being said, with Dishonored, I kind of would like, a, even though I just slagged off sequels, I would like a sequel to Dishonored. I will, yeah, I would or, as well. Or, or preferably a prequel, even, I don't know. Well, that's the thing, they may do that. There's lots of there's lots of scope there, they've spent a lot of time. That's the problem with new IPs, is that. They spend a lot of time putting effort into the world, and I can tell you that again from experience. I've put a lot of effort into the background of my world and the uh, and the you know the characters and kind of building building that that property up essentially. And then they don't want to just let that that amount of effort go because the first game costs more than any of the others will do. But they want to keep making money from that yeah. same amount, and then they'll keep I, doing it. I have a, an issue with that for a couple of reasons, and. Um, I, I'm quite into my story-driven games, and um, this is something that uh, one of the creators of uh, Avatar: Legend of Korra was saying about the fact that they could have, they could have, that series was successful, and they, and when it was first being made, they could have kept it going and stretched it out like other animated series do, and they were like, well, okay, if someone sat you down and said to you, I'm going to tell you the greatest story you've ever heard. Oh, that's great, and then they go, it never ends. He was like, count me out. Like they had an end point in mind, and they never swayed from it. And I'm like, I, I wish more games did that. Like a game that was a trilogy just did three, and it's, then the IP was over. That's it's comparable. It's through anything, though, isn't it? Any it's, movies and everything. I know. I wish it was happened more often in life. It's comparable to um, to English sitcoms, not sitcoms. Uh, no, no, yeah, sorry, sitcoms. It's 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 comparable to English sitcoms and American sitcoms. American yeah. sitcoms go on forever. The f they have twenty episodes a season, and each each episode's thirty minutes to an hour long. And then they'll keep going and keep going and flogging that dead horse until mm. until no one cares anymore, or everyone does care still for some reason. Um, but uh, usually, you get two seasons out of Eng England, and they've got six yeah. episodes each. And although I have a bit of a problem with the six episode thing. I kind of like the fact that The Office, for example, stopped after two seasons. Whereas the two series in a special. Yeah, and then, then they're on like season 10 or something in America now with it. Which apparently it's got its own merits and it is it is a fairly good show, but, you know, it, I haven't seen much of it to compare it, I'm afraid. But, you know, it's, it's the same thing and they'll keep doing that. They'll keep doing that until they don't make any money or they don't get the ratings anymore, they don't get the sales anymore. Yeah. And it's upsetting as a consumer, as, as a... Educated consumer, I'd say, because there's, there's, uh, I'm, uh, again, this is probably a bit of elitism, but there are people who will just buy cool things, and there are people who will buy things that are that are good and interesting, if you know what I mean. And they'll, they'll, yeah, as you said, someone like you, Sam, wants a new IP every year. They want something fresh and interesting to to invest themselves into, because you know, we know that the we get. We get satisfaction from the, we get excitement from those new IPs. So look at the Avatar stuff, Sam, that you recently got into last year or the year yeah, before. Yeah. You really, really got into that. And you know, if if you keep watching it, I'm sure it's great. I haven't watched it yet, but you know, when it if you keep watching it, it'll eventually get sour if you keep if it keeps going yeah. and keeps going and keeps well, going. It's, it's, well, it's over. It's finished. <laughs> it's done. And Biggs Biggs has just said, "I'm glad there's more Red Dwarf than that." I'm kind of, I'm kind of mm. wish they stopped after four or five. I think they could have stopped at the end of series six, and just that would have been the good stopping point because series six was still good. The reason, the, 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 the reason it went yeah. off was because Rob Grant and Doug Neiler fell out, and yeah. at the end of series five. Well, that's happened with Community as well. 
as soon as what's his face um, disappeared. Rob Grant was the uh, Rob Grant was what made it funny. Doug Neiller was what made it the story. story. Yeah, yeah, he had more of the he had more of the of the of the sort of interesting story stuff, and Rob Grant was funnier, I think. Mm. Hmm. But series six had the one with the um, with the Navy had a kid when they go into the computer game. Yeah, six one of the best. Seems, yeah. One of the best episodes of Red Dwarf ever. That after series it, six was was where it stopped being good. I think. What did, yeah. what did I say to to get that reaction from Biggs? He's used a swear word. He's used a three letter three swear letter word. Three letter swear word. What what the hell is it's, that? It's Twitch doing that. It could be any swear word. All right. <laughs> but no, <laughs> I was I, say tit. That's three. That's three letters. <laughs> tit off, Chris. <laughs> It did go, uh, whatever. I, it's, he's like two minutes behind. You saw two minutes ago, Big Scott. <laughs> um, well, someone's mentioned Firefly. We can't go in there. We can't I haven't. I haven't seen Firefly. I've got it downloaded. I've heard so much fanboyness about it. I don't want to talk about it though because we get with we're getting off games. It's reek good though. <laughs> I, I've heard it's reek good. I think I've got Firefly anyway. I'll, I'll Someone mentioned a bit earlier Grim Fandango, and it'd been kind of floating around. Just like mm. in my mind, Grim Fandango. Uh, is it Double Fine that are doing it? Yep, Double Aren't Fine. Double Fine really getting people pissed off now by not finishing games and doing just being dicks, basically. You know, it's the, it's the original creator. I've forgotten his name. God, why have I forgotten his name? Is it what's his name? Double uh, Fine's Sh- run by that dude who was at Lucas Arts forever. Schaefer. So is, yes, so that's it. It's, all right, so Grim Fandango was his. Original game. He's managed to get the IP rights. I think that's how it went. Anyway, he's managed to get the IP rights from Lucasfilm, and he's he's the the redo it, the redoing the entire game. Now that is a game that I want to play because I haven't played all of the original, and it's something that I really was interested in, but I hated the tank controls when I tried it it, uh, again this year. Actually, Uh, sorry, last year I tried it. I couldn't get my head into it, but I'm hoping the redo that will allow you to at least rebind things. Grim or... Fandango, the demo of Grim Fandango was the first game I played on a PC, on my PC. I had a demo disc and I had nothing else, I had no real games, just a disc on a PC gamer or whatever it was. And I, I installed the Grim Fandango demo. I remember the controls being awful, because it's not like you've got to turn... and Because mm, of the yeah. camera. It's, it's Again, it's the same issue that we, had, we have with um, Metal Gear one and two where you don't have any control over the camera at all mm. and yeah that you you have weird controls and it, your brain kind of flips as the camera flips and you're like oh should i be oh yeah. no i know <laughs> that the double fine have been in trouble for things like um uh was it space based df9 or whatever it is speak speaking of double fine i actually played one of their games uh this uh, over christmas as well um stacking which i think is a double fine game and I didn't. Ooh, that it, really cool. it looked cool, but I got bored of it very, very, Stacking. very quickly. You basically you're a Russian doll. You're a tiny little Russian doll, and your family's been um, taken away, and you're like the little kid and has been left. And the, the premise of the story is you need to go and like find your family or help them escape or something. But you're this tiny little doll, and the reason it's called stacking is because you stack yourself into a bigger doll, and then you stack yourself into another bigger doll, but each doll has a specific skill, and there are special dolls with very special skills that do things like, for example, I found a, a burlesque woman, uh, and she started doing some fan dance or something, and um, she she distracted a guard. I jumped out of the back of her and then ran into where the guard was, but there's like quite a few different ways to do all of the puzzles, but I didn't... I just... There's something about it I didn't enjoy. I wasn't, I wasn't. It didn't feel like I was achieving anything really. Um, but Chris, I have not heard the word fan dance. Well, the phrase fan dance since I was about nine. Do you like my that, little? That is a proper old man phrase. What? Just fan dance. Grim fan dance, or? Well, Bill Esk is a, is a bit of, a, of an old school kind of thing, anyway, isn't it? Yeah, so shut up, right? It was it was in context. I'm not having a go. I just said uh, it's <laughs> nice to hear such an old phrase, as fan dance. What's well, so it? Sam comes out with some some cracking old phrases that I old I'm, timey phrases. Yeah, I, I, you said some. I actually um, pulled you up on last time, and it was just cool. Anyway, I don't remember. He says chap and all kinds of stuff, Sam. Yeah, but I said chap. Yeah, but you're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> I I consider myself to be an idiot on many many occasions. You, you should always consider yourself to be an idiot, yeah, no matter I who think, you are, unless you mean. <laughs> there you go. Well, there's, right. there's the ground ground rules set, isn't it? Chris's secret rules for life. <laughs> Hotline Miami Two. Yes. Yes. I enjoyed the first one considerably. I did as well. I, I will get the second one. Simple as that. My only I issue is. 
well, what, what, what will they do with that formula to make it the, the interesting? Not, I don't know if they're going to do not anything I, with it. I, was, I read an do article, more levels, basically. I, I read an article somewhere, and it just said this is, again, a fan service. It's just the same as it was. <sighs> I, think. I don't have a problem with that. I'll still play it. Yeah, yeah I'll still play all, it. Well. All they need to do is have some new levels and a new soundtrack, and I'll be, I mean... Yeah. I'm still playing. I'm still trying to play some of the bonus levels just to like get a better score on them. Sometimes, you know, I occasionally mm. pop into it just to have a have a bit of a killing spree. But I don't know. There's something. I'm not into the games where you run around shooting people. But there's something about that game that makes because it's quite fast action and a, you've got a, a split second to make a decision. It's mm. it's a beautiful balance of skill and puzzle, isn't it? It's like it is almost Timing. a puzzle game. And yeah, that music as well. That music is, there's something about it that just draws you in and makes you want to murder. And it's not the kind of music that I would sit and listen to and be like, oh, this is my kind of music. But for when you're playing the game, it's perfect. Yeah. It's just <clears> really fit. But yeah, I think I'll get the second one. I'll probably wait for a sale, but yeah, I'll, I'll get the second one. I think it'll be cheap when it comes out. I think the original was about 10 quid when it came out, wasn't it? Uh, yeah. That isn't cheap for an indie game. Two or three quid is about right for a, a, a sale indie game. Don't shake your head at me. You're supposed to. You're supposed to support the indie community. I am. I am. It. And to be fair, I do. Exactly. I mean, I bought. Um, there's a game that isn't that well known, um, but it, it was published by Team Seventeen, uh, and it was um, one of my indie friend, indie dev friends, who published it. And I bought that full price. It was like twelve or thirteen quid when it came out. I haven't played it yet. And I could have waited because it's been like two or three quid uh, since that's then. That's kind of almost as bad to, to buy a game and not play it. No, no, I haven't played it yet because I haven't had time to play it. That's all it is. And plus, when he when it actually got released, unfortunately, there was quite a lot of bugs and I was hearing a fair amount of Twitter blurb about bugs and I thought, I'll leave it because I don't want to ruin the experience because it looks like quite a cool game. It's a game called Light. Um, I think I've mentioned it before. And it's again, it's a hacking and stealth game, but it's two D top down types thing, and it looks quite interesting. And I just want to kind of see. It's a Unity game as well, so I want to kind of see how he's implemented things, and I'll I'll be playing it critically, I think, more than uh, more than trying to have fun because I know the guy and because I'm interested in you know his uh, his methods of coding and and that. So. Um, Fair enough. Um. <sighs> What else are we looking forward to? The, I've, I've, I've kind of run out, really. I, I did have another one, but I can't remember what it was. Yeah, I mean, I've got a couple of things running around my head, but nothing that's that's massively important to talk about. I mean, there's another, again, quite a few sequels. There's another uh, Batman Ark of Night, which is by the original, Rocks, the original uh, developers, Rocksteady. Mm. So the fact that they're back on board doing that and the fact that they went off from... Arkham Origins means that this game has actually probably been in development for quite a long time which in my mind usually is a good sign. I like games that have had a slightly longer development cycle rather than games that are just shoved out the door by Christmas. Yep. Do you know from forever you really like that about. one? Oh. <laughs> yeah, I say usually. That's the, that's the, that's like the exception that proves the rule, I guess. Like the, you know what I mean? The, <laughs> that we've game got, um, we've got The Witcher 3 coming out. Uh, Witcher 3 coming out on May the 19th. I think and Steve would have been all over that if he was here today. That's that's why I mentioned it because I have I said I played the first one. I do keep meaning to go back to it and, and give it a bit more time. I did spend a few, quite a few hours in it, um, but I just felt a little bit like I'm just wasting my time here. I could be playing something better, you know. Mm. It's the only thing. But I want to play two again because two's supposed to be very good, and three again looks like it's going to be even better. Um, and I do like my RPGs. Just don't have as much time to invest in them these days. Uh, yeah, the division. The Witcher Two is very good. The division. division uh, yeah, um, that's the one I was thinking of actually. But although I'm not going to have a machine to play it on, <laughs> there's also it looks very cool. There's also the is crew it not as out well. Of isn't it? Uh, it probably won't be the division. Huh. Uh, hope, uh, hopefully, it does. I think that's another. Uh, that's another Ubisoft game. So do you think you'll be unlocking unlocking it's, towers and building it's a homestead? <laughs> coming out on PC. Uh, oh, to, to be arranged in two, 2015. That, that'll do for me then. Because that looks it's, great. It looks squad based. Is it multiplayer squad based? It's, or is it's it a, all is multiplayer. It, is it? And it, it is all multiplayer. It's kind of um, instance multiplayer. So you bump into other teams of people who kind of um, taking over buildings and stuff. But is your but team AI controlled, or is it? No, you your team is real base? people. In the um, the, the in the videos, the, those were just teams of real people playing. And some oh, were actually, it. kind of I bit have... like Des is it like Destiny, in a way that yeah. it's kind of sort of half single player and half multiplayer. 
but it's all it's more in one. interesting than Destiny because Destiny looked. Even I know when nothing you, about it. The original Destiny. videos showed the Destiny made it look pretty cool, and as soon yeah. as I started to see anything more than that, I was like, "This looks boring." Yeah, yeah. it's a, it's so, a, it's another MMO without much to do in it, in my opinion, uh, from what I can tell. I haven't played it, so I don't know. I couldn't give you a full rundown of it, but I did see it. I think I remember seeing a video for uh, what was that one you just mentioned there, the Tom Clancy one, the Division. Uh, Division, Division, yeah. Yeah, when it was like squad based, and they were sort of using tactics and stuff and chatting to each other, but. At the same time, it did just look like another slightly pretty third-person cover shooter. Like it didn't seem, I didn't see anything mechanically that that really took it any bigger than just being a multiplayer third-person cover shooter. Like I don't, it I might be great. Lot, there's, but... a, there's a lot of kind of um, kind of ground control in that game. You got you got to kind of clear buildings and stuff, and you can kind of get your own base, and then. There's a lot of it's, it's it got is. a lot of ideas that I used you have to, to have. You have to climb to the top of towers to uh, yeah, it's, it's, to survey it's, it's, the local it's, area, or turn the radio off or something. Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah, fair enough. And then do you, is a, a homestead. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> now, well, you just said that is you have to establish your own base. Yeah, it's just yeah, the same exactly. thing, just called something different. Anyway, we'll see. We'll see. I'll wait for the reviews. I might even maybe get a demo of that or something. I don't know. If you can get demos, what, 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 I mean, 1992 or something, for fuck's sake. Yeah, you're going to get a rolling demo off a of cover tape. <laughs> cover tape? <laughs> yeah. C90 tape. Yeah. Um, the, uh, it looks like um, 2015, it looks like 2015 is the year of the The games, because we've got The Witness coming out, which I'm quite looking forward to, which is Jonathan Blow's new game. Jonathan Blow being the indie developer behind Braid. Big massive, oh, right. massive Xbox right. Xbox hit. Um, the Witness is it looks quite interesting. It's a puzzle game, and it, from what I can tell, it's quite pretty. Looks quite whimsical. Um, but from what I can tell, there's something like it's it's. I don't know if it's procedurally generated or not, but it's um, it just looks like the puzzles are going to be quite intricate. And quite involved. Yeah, I saw this. This was one of the ones that was uh, released when the PS4 was being pushed, wasn't it? It's like one of the launch titles or something. Not a launch title, but a it's not a launch title. Of... No, it's not a launch title. Is it's it not out yet. It is exclusive to the PlayStation. It's, yeah. it's one of those that will All be right. done when it's done, so it may not even be out this year. But I think the hinting on it coming. I think he started I... to tweet about. Yeah, about I saw it. a video of it um, last year sometime, and it was one of the things that was like, really pimping PlayStation. Like right. there's PlayStation exclusivity all over it. But it, it, I think it's a timed exclusive. I don't think it's going to be a... In fact, yes, it definitely is, because it's on PlayStation 4, PC, and iPad on the list that I'm looking at. Um, the Order, 1866. 1886, sorry. I'm not sure if that looks any interesting I'm, or not. I, as much as I'd like to give it a chance, I just think, again, it's like, as you just said before about The Division, it looks like a cover shooter with a, a Victorian vibe, which is... It looks steampunk. It looks a bit like um, Dishonored, doesn't it? Yeah. A bit darker. Yeah, you, you, you run around with a lightning gun or something. It's an alternative history, apparently. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it could be, but it, again, I've watched a, I think a gameplay demo of it. It was about five or six minutes long, and I was like, yeah, it's fine. It's not bad. It doesn't look like a shit game, but it doesn't look like an intriguing or interesting one either. Other than a slightly interesting art style and a very nice lighting system, like this, yeah. it almost looks black and white a lot of the time, which again sort of put me off. I was like, I get that they're going for a dark and gloomy feel, but that's just one of the things that they've made it about when I played the first Gears of War. I was like, sorry, we own black and white tellies, and like, where's the color? Put some goddamn color in your game. Like, I want to see some fucking colors. There's, Unless you're going black and white as an artistic <laughs> choice. Like a splatterhouse or something, like that. Um, this war, what's it called? There's a there's a two D. It's just been um, it's just been. I know nominated. which one you mean. Yeah, isn't it, isn't uh, it out uh, uh, out war the, or something like that? So, so. This war of ours. This war something of like that, isn't it? Anyway, it it looks really good. I saw the the demo for that a while back. It was on Humble Bundle. I haven't bought it yet, um, but I do intend to. It looks right up my street it, and it's just been nominated for best to uh, like ec excellence in story in the uh, independent game festival uh, which is a big thing that all these stuff's been announced today um what platforms is that on? everything i think cool. i believe it's definitely pc and definitely ps4 so, uh, P playstation so um there's also uh, i've just noticed and i have read something about this but i haven't read enough to know much about it uh, mad max is coming out 2015 
again, is well, that game. a movie tie-in? I hope not. I hope they're not redoing Mad Max. Yeah, they are. They're, 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 yeah, oh, it's, it's not heard about it. It's oh, really good. Off Hollywood. No, it's, you it's, fucking it's, twat. It's not Hollywood. It's the same guy who did the originals. Oh, will you stop it? Whoever you are. It, look, it's got um, Tom Hardy as uh, Mad Max. It looks really good. I think they should have got Gibbers back. <laughs> oh, <laughs> he'd still, be, he'd still he, be up for it. He's too busy making movies about L. Ron Hubbard, isn't he? <laughs> Is he actually doing a movie about L. Ron Hubbard? No, he isn't, but he's, he did uh, that. Was it dead? No, it wasn't. That wasn't him, was it? I don't know. I want you to talk about Zelda because you've it written was... this. You've written this. I I did. Yeah. Oh, was it I, you? Well, oh. It was. It was. It was I. I don't think Lou's ever been bothered about Zelda. I think. I'd, I'd, I'd not played as. Well, no, no, that's why because the comment you, you you made, I was uh, I was a little bit. No, oh, I I have I have a similar thing with Zelda that um, Zelda makes me want to buy Nintendo consoles. I'm not. I've never been into Mario. I think I've probably said this exact same shit on other podcasts. But um, the new footage for the new Zelda game, if they can, I've seen some gameplay footage as well, which looks like they've really put a lot of thought into the into the to the gameplay, like they always do. There's like there's some really simple nice touches, like when your horse is running, you don't have to direct it necessarily. Um, the horse will sort of look after itself a little bit like Agro does in Shadow of the Colossus. Like, Agro won't run into rocks and obstacles and trees. There's a little bit of AI in the horse, and they were like, well, horses don't run into stuff. Whereas, you know, in other games, when you ride a horse, it does, because it's stupid. Yeah. Uh, and just some stuff you can do with the combat, like there's like, there's a, like a leap move you can do off the horse and fire your arrows in midair and stuff, and I'm like, it looks like not only have they got some interesting combat mechanics, which Zelda hasn't had before, but also the game world looks huge and beautiful and it looks like it could be another it, big jump for them and I'm just, if they can I'll, I, I would wait until it comes out and see what comes out and see how expensive the Wii U is at the time if it's really worth it, but it piques my interest, it's made me sort of look at it and go, ah I nearly basically. bought a Wii U the other day uh, Wii, yeah, Wii U, that's what they are, I nearly bought one the other day in anticipation for the Zelda, but that's pretty much that and the Mario games is the only thing I'd really buy on, on them and I did the same with the Wii though, I've got a few Mario games. Uh, I've got all of the relevant well, Galaxy. Games you said and... was brilliant, didn't you? you said yeah, Galaxy yeah. One and Two was great. Um, but I'll, I'll be getting a Wii U just for that one game, which I'm not sure if that's the right thing to do or not. You know, I don't know, man. It's just I don't know what it is about Zelda. I just I just love it. <laughs> it's just brilliant. And I've not even played Skyward Sword, but the, the other ones that I've played are pretty much adored. Even um, Wind Waker, which towards the end, when you go around getting the Triforce shards, is really tedious. But still, the rest of the game was great. Yeah, I, I actually Wind Waker is the only one I ever lost interest in, and I can't mm. remember what what part it was. It does sound familiar that though, so maybe maybe it was similar. But yeah, yeah. I'm looking I'm looking through um, lists on uh, online, and I can't see anything else that looks exciting. Anyway, well, that'd be good list. timing then. What do you mean? Yeah. There's one oh, two right, hours. Right, yeah. <laughs> hey. oh, Shadow Run Online, actually. Now I, oh, I've I'm, heard about that. I'm a big fan of the Shadow Run universe in general. I've I've enjoyed the old SNES game. I think it might have been out on something else, but I, I played it on the SNES. The original Shadow Run on the SNES, um, and I've played Shadow Run Returns, which is a very different type of game. But you know, it's a turn-based strategy, really. But I, I enjoyed that as well. I did play the Xbox version, or the Xbox 360 version of Shadow Run, and it was an online multiplayer first-person game, and you had, like, magic and guns and stuff, but it wasn't fun at all. It wasn't good in the slightest. In fact, that's the only game so far I haven't enjoyed. So maybe Shadow Run Online might be... It's Shadow Run MMO, Online is, though, looks it? almost exactly like um, XCOM. Yeah? It looks like the new XCOMs. Very similar. It doesn't well, have the same sh- style as the the Shadow Run Returns game. I was just going to say, um, Shadow Run Returns was done by a company called um, Ah Bollocks. Forgotten them. Forgotten it, the uh, name of them. This but this me... looks like a, basically a mod for XCOM. It looks very similar. It's, it's not. It's not the same company that's doing it anyway. Definitely not. Yeah. It's just, it's it's still a turn based strategy though by the looks of it. Looks nice. Looks pretty. Looks like XCOM. Your mum looks like XCOM. She does. And on that note, we'll probably close <laughs> close the show down unless anyone else has anything else to mention. I don't think anyone um, does though. I'm spent. 
Yes. Right, so yes, thank you very much, guys. Next week we'll have a better subject, or we'll have a more solid subject to talk about, hopefully. But we just I thought... I believe that before Christmas break and illness and all that kind of stuff, we had a... Uh, was it tool, tools and things and mechanics in games? Yes. We never actually did that one, so that could be next week, possibly. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I don't see why not. Yeah, let's, let's give that a go. Tools, gadgets, and mechanics, yeah. Yeah, we'll yeah. just... We'll, we'll compile a list and talk rubbish for another couple of hours. But thanks, everyone, for watching, and hopefully uh, you will be back next week. Catch you later. See you later. See you later.